Namaste. On behalf of Chairperson Ms. Shubra Maheshwari and her committee, I, Gunjan Sindhi, Honorary Secretary Fikki Flo, would like to extend a warm welcome to our versatile guest, Ms. Shraddha Sala, and accomplished speaker, Dr. Sandeep Kochar, our distinguished past chairs, and our esteemed members. May I request everyone to please rise for the national anthem, which has been curated for us by our past and present chairpersons and kokilas of Flow Hyderabad. I request the photographers to refrain from clicking pictures during the national anthem. <laughs> Speakers, Ms. Shraddha Sala and Dr. Sandeep Kochar, Past Chair Ms. Priyanka Ganeriwal, Ms. Usha Rani Mane, Ms. Kamini Saraf, Ms. Sona Chatwani, Ms. Sunali Saraf to step forward for the lighting of the lamp, and Ms. Mansi Malik, the essence of women empowerment and the commitment to sustainability. The strings of pearls represents the city of pearls. The badge itself is made of refurbished wood. The flower motif is handcrafted in the traditional art form of Tanjore. The flowers depicted on the badges are symbolic of state festival of Batakuma. All the components used to make these badges have been sourced from women entrepreneurs to facilitate women entrepreneurship at all levels. Strength, staying true, true to sustainability, we have ensured that they are reusable even after the year ends as a contemporary neck piece. I hope that these badges serve as a reminder that working together can produce remarkable outcomes. I request all the past chairs to take a picture. I now request core committee and executive committee heads to line up for the pictures with our speakers. I would like to invite our chairperson, Ms. Shubra Maheshwari, to share her welcome address. Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon is all about cosmic energy. You know that, that moments when we think, when we work up and wonder that why it happened, why it didn't happen, 
and why it happened to me or why it didn't happen to me. That is where the cosmic energy comes into play and though some of us, most of us, few of our, few of us may not be believing in these sciences, but yes, we do think about these questions. This cosmic energy is a little spark which is inside every individual as the soul. It's the substratum of all things and all beings of the entire universe. It's an eternal song of the divine. It is continuously resounding in silence on the background of everything that exists. I am delighted to welcome all of you to a riveting session on alternate sciences of Vastu Shastra, Astrology, Tarot, Healing, etc. by our renowned speakers, Ms. Shraddha Sala and Mr. Sandeep Kochar. Vastu and astrology are an integral part mostly of all our lives. From the moment a child is born, we look to the stars from choosing the name to choosing the life partner and all. Whether it's starting a new business, a relationship, going abroad or getting married, astrology has a part to play in every aspect of life. In any case, astrology has become an integral part of our lifestyles. Similarly, most of us have grown up listening to our grandparents and parents telling us which direction the main door should be or where the bed should be placed in a house. The traces of Vastu Shastra and astrology track back all the way into our mythology and Vedic text. The ancient epic Mahabharata refers to Lord Vishwakarma and his sense of Vastu and architecture in the construction of the Laksha Graha, the wax palace. Vastu and astrology are peculiar yet intriguing sciences that has baffled many enthusiasts. Vastu in its broadest sense is a holistic science which is in full conformity with the entire cosmos and flow of energy from all sources. Astrology in its broadest sense is the study of the positions and aspects of celestial bodies in the belief that they have an influence on the course of natural earthy occurrences. Our esteemed speaker, Mishra Dasala and Dr. Sandeep Kochar will navigate us through the nuances of the mystic sciences and cosmic energy and give us insights into how to make the cosmos work for us. We started our term this month with a vision of Stronger She to provide tailored resources and support for women in all walks of life. Our speaker today were very intrigued by the vision and the logo of the year. May I request to play the vision video? The world today needs strong women. Women who will lift and build others. Women who will live bravely. Women of indomitable will. A woman is a full circle. Within her is the power to create, nurture and transform. Our logo for the year 2022-2023 depicts power, strength and resilience. The magnificent and the powerful lion. As we take a closer look at the pride of lions, the lioness is the backbone of the pride. Lioness are the core. Similarly, a woman is the supreme force of nature. Our vision for this year is assess, adapt and accelerate. Assess the damage done by the pandemic. Adapt to the opportunities, situations and circumstances in the post-pandemic era and accelerate into a journey of newer heights and achievements. Therefore, our vision for this year at Flow is to brighten this light, to promote women's sense of self-worth, their ability to determine their own choices and their right to influence social change for themselves and others. This year, we are committed to create a better future for women of all walks of life by helping them hone their Shakti to overcome ups and downs in life. Leverage their Samarthya to become financially and digitally independent and have the Shaurya to believe that they can achieve whatever they put their minds to. Our vision is of a stronger she, whether she is a homemaker from a small rural area or a young student unsure of a future or the director of a Fortune 500 company. So our initiatives in alignment with the vision of the national president are being taken up with the purpose of creating an ecosystem where women can catapult each other to higher levels of empowerment while bringing along the women from the underprivileged sections of society as well. Here sharing a bird's eye view of the blueprint of our initiatives. 
flow, member engagement, enrichment, and evolution shall be given emphasis via speaker sessions, field trips, workshops, and out-of-the-box conclaves and panel discussions. We shall also promote business networking amongst our flow members. Financial literacy. This initiative is to empower women from different strata of society to make independent decisions and to be better prepared and financially secure in their lives, whether it is a lady from a grassroots level or the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Women Skilling and Support This initiative will aim at upheaval and skilling upgradation of flow adopted village district in Telangana, primarily Narayanpet. Impact an initiative to empower differently abled people, be it mentally handicapped or physically handicapped, to provide them sustainable livelihoods, skill sets, etc. Quest for the Best An initiative to open young minds to the inspiring world of opportunities, just like a finishing school for young college-going girls from government colleges who need that professional touch to be prepared for the corporate world. Seed to Succeed an initiative to supplement school curriculum for government school children or under poverty school kids with necessary trainings to start building leaders at a young age. Primarily will focus on computer literacy and self-defense. Telangana Art and Culture, an initiative to revive and promote the different art forms and culture of Telangana, be it handloom, food, crafts, etc. Empowerment, an initiative to promote and nurture innovative women-led startups and business through knowledge-based trainings and tie-ups. Women with Wings, to help create an experience for our members by handcrafting holidays tailored to suit their taste and leaving a lasting impression in new learnings via various field trips in and around the city. Style Tatwa, Flo Hyderabad's signature fashion and lifestyle march the biggest exhibition of in Hyderabad which focuses not only on fashion and lifestyle but also on various categories like interiors and home decor, health and wellness and startups. We shall also be providing free space to weavers to support them in their journey. She is a bold and fierce beauty, yet gentle and nurturing like a true queen should be. She is ambitious, she is driven, she is independent, she is a mastermind, she is supportive, she is tender, she is caring, she is creative, she is us. Thank you. In keeping with our vision, our first event, Wired for Challenges with Actress Television The world presenter, today needs strong women and fitness evangelists. Mandarabi women who will lift and build others. 220 members and guests in attendance. A glimpse of that. promise that we will have an empowering and intellectual year ahead at Flow Hyderabad. Hyderabad very very often because nobody has given me an introduction as fantastic as that. Thank you. Wow. Feeling very good. Thank you. Hi Mandara. Welcome to Flow Hyderabad and now that we know that you would be at least our quarterly speaker. For sure. For sure. <laughs> A huge applause to the committee for living and executing the chairperson's vision of Stronger She. And as Shubra says, she is us. Thank you and Jai Hind.
super cop and former Lieutenant Governor Dr. Kiran Bedi was equally profound with over 200 members in attendance. A warm welcome to our charismatic guest, Ms. Kiran Bedi. Women may be made of flowers and frills, but some are made of grit and steel. And one such iconic personality is amongst us today, Dr. Kiran Bedi. They called it a blueprint for good governance, cutting across leadership qualities both in private and public sector. How wonderful to see this beauty with brains. Why would a woman in that age even think of joining the police? Oh, I wanted to be in the government and I wanted to deal with the men. I wanted to fix them. But if you busy, you can't find any problem. How can you keep them busy? You can make a club. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. Very, very truly said, ma'am. about our teams. Our Telangana Art and Culture team has sprung into action with a social media campaign to create awareness about culture, handlooms, handicrafts, cuisine and heritage of Telangana. Don't miss their post every Sunday on Flow social media pages. You never know when they come up with a surprise quiz for all of you. Our social media team is also working extremely hard to spread the word about all our great work and have planned beautifully. So we urge you to follow Flow Hyderabad Facebook and Instagram pages and stay updated on the upcoming programs and awareness activities. The April member who was most active on social media was Ms. Samta Dhareva. I'm happy to report that we held three rounds of interviews so far and have had a lot of new additions to our Flow family. Memberships are currently open and I would encourage you to refer like-minded friends and family members who can benefit from the organization. We have power pack programs and initiatives planned for the upcoming weeks. We have the launch of our initiative, Financial Literacy Cell, on May 4th. We are planning a field trip to show you behind the scenes working off the airport on May 10th. Please be vigilant on WhatsApp messages coming from Flow Admin Office as they would be limited audience event, first come, first serve. We are also just under two months away from our signature exhibition, Style Tatwa. The two-day fashion and lifestyle extravaganza will feature over 200 brands from across India. The key feature of Style Tatwa is that, being a non-profit initiative, part of the proceeds will be channelized towards skilling women from underprivileged sections. We will also be allocating special space for artisans and needy women entrepreneurs to showcase and promote their products in health and wellness, healthy foods and millets. These will be at subsidized prices. Please contact Rashmi Doshi, Simran, Anutotla, Sujita Chityala for these. With this mammoth event fast approaching, we would encourage all members to participate either by volunteering during the exhibition or spreading the word and referring brands who might be interested in taking up stalls. We are left only with the last 20 stalls. We majorly sold out. Thank you. And before we get into the captivating and motivating session with our MNN speakers, I would like to reiterate a key announcement, subscription renewal. We have a great year planned for all of you. And in order to make the most of it, 
please renew your subscriptions do not wait for any calls to come for renewal of subscription it's your organization it's made by you for you of you please renew your subscriptions there will be lots of privileges surprises coming in only for the ones who've renewed the subscription for instance our today's speakers have gracefully obliged to offer their personal consultancy services to members at a flow specialized tariff point to be noted only subscription renewed members can avail the subsidized tariff in hub we have a in hub desk ahead of each event of ours outside in the uh, entry foyer i would request all members and new members to make use that desk is for you any questions any support that you need from the organization just walk up to the in hub desk register your point and we will work on it flow marketplace is another wonderful venue for entrepreneurs to spread the word about their brand at a very negligible cost finally i would like to end by reiterating to everyone about the flow code of conduct being a professional organization our members are expected to adhere to an extremely professional set of protocols at all times with regards to dressing code of behavior integrity and confidentiality i am looking forward to learning something new every day with each one of you let's march together in this journey of self growth and empowerment cause it's not about one person she is i would now like to request ms shraddha sala and our chairperson ms subramaheshwari to grace the dais please ms subramaheshwari to felicitate ms shraddha sala with a flow memento please i would like to introduce our speaker ms shraddha sala unleashing the power of mind energy positive thinking for us is ms shraddha sala being a number 1 which she literally is as per her numerology chart her journey has been filled with varied experiences and learnings from media design and photography shraddha sala is totally a highly respected tarot reader a rare gift and proven track record in numerology she has been practicing for a number of years and has gone undergone an extensive training from the most renowned names in the field then evolved her own intuitive approach to art winning her loyalty clientele comprising of who's who from the fields across india and even abroad mishrada firmly believes that numerology is one of the most accurate signs and gives a direct insight to your energies thereby guiding you towards a solution she is also qualified vastu practitioner a healer dealing with power of mind energies and positive thinking shraddha's usp lies in her extensive knowledge of the subject both theoretical and practical coupled with intuitive connection with energies passion towards her work in numerology and tarot and her 100% positive approach towards any given situation is what clients tell shraddha is the reason for her loyalty faith which it comes to offering guidance and solutions to any issue let's hear from her about how the power of channelizing energies changing the mindset and spreading positivity in and around can transform one's life i request Ms. Shraddha Sala to take the session forward. Thank you. Mandu was actually absolutely right. What an introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's so lovely to be here seeing all of you so gracefully and beautifully dressed. I can't even carry off a sari. Seriously, I'm looking at everyone and, and it's just amazing. So here goes. Uh, make the cosmos work for you. I think today... Uh, the person who's completely aligned with their cosmos is sandeep out there because he's one man in a woman full of in a room full of 200 women so you've got it right today for sure but um, uh just this whole energy this vibration the stronger she logo it's it's just really really nice um the way you know shubra she uh said everything and all it was so beautiful but you said one point which was absolutely correct today's subject is such that you all may not believe in it 
right? But everyone wants to know about it. So here goes. There are three things that are ruling all of us. One is our destiny, which is the day we are born and the day we're going to die. The second thing is our karma. Karma is an accumulation of our past, present, and future lifetimes. And the third thing is something known as free will. Free will are the choices that you make and the steps that you take. You have chose to come here, you choose to renew your subscription, you choose to do something. All these choices that we make have an effect on our free will. Now, all these sciences, astrology, numerology, tarot, vastu, mind power, they affect our free will. They can't change our destiny or our karma, but they can add value to our life, right? And once we know what value it's adding to our life, we take the other two together and then we have a whole. So they all are always intertwined. I started my journey by studying numerology. I was... Um, just given birth to my second daughter, didn't know what to do. I thought I'll just start and I'll study. Uh, numerology is a very, very strong branch of astrology. It deals with your date of birth. I'm going to very nicely explain this to all of you. So after this session, you all will be mini numerologists and tarot card readers and vastu experts because I want to give you as much as information as, as I can and make it as simple as I can. Numerology is the science of numbers. There are nine numbers from number one to number nine. For example, if someone's date of birth is 28, they become a 2 plus 8, 1. 21, 2 plus 1, 3. And there are nine planets which are affecting and guiding these nine numbers. We need to understand the alignment between the planets and our date of birth. So numerologically, numerology is just about your date of birth. Now we calculate two energies from numerology. One is your birth number, that is your date of birth. And second is your destiny number, which is a total of your date of birth. Like I'm 10, 10, 19, 78. So one would become my birth number and nine would become my destiny number. In 18 years of doing numerology, I think it's a hardcore science. You don't go wrong with numbers, you know. You do get to know what the person is all about, their strengths, their weaknesses, their ups, their downs, their time zones, and how one can add value to it. Numerology also covers your name, your name vibration. No, we don't change everybody's name or have to add an extra K or have to add an extra R. It's just that sometimes if the numbers are not in balance, we like to do that to get everything into a balance. I probably am the last numerologist to change your name because I believe you're born with a certain something and you want to carry that on. But sometimes it's good to have a little awareness and understand how we balance that out. Numerology also covers uh, your signature. There's signature analysis which comes in uh, numerology. Uh, signature is your significance in life. So when you're signing a paper, you'll notice never will you have the same signature. You know, there'll always be something different because whatever you're feeling from within, from your subconscious state of mind comes out over there at that particular point of time. So there's a way to clear that. We don't like crosses, we don't like cuts, we don't like going up and coming down. You know, there's a nice, simple way that we can clear that. Numerology also covers amazing things like your uh, lucky colors, your lucky stone, your lucky dates, days. It has a great effect on professions. Like if you're a doctor, lawyer, what's the right number for you? What's the right energy you should use? If you're in the media industry, what's something that can raise that energy? We do know that it's used a lot in Bollywood, you know, and a lot by uh, the entertainment industry, adding an extra K or adding an extra this. Yes, sometimes it does really well um, because it does help. For example, uh, the reason our movies are released on a Friday is because Friday is the day for Venus, which is also known as Shukra. So sometime long back ago, somebody said this is the right day to do it. Not because it was a Friday and then a Saturday and Sunday and everyone has holidays, but there's a numerological energy to it. And Venus is the planet of entertainment and media. So similarly, it, it has a lot of value to certain works that you do, you know. Like you'll see most of the leaders will either be a number one or a number eight. Uh, because eight is the power of Shani and it gives you that strength, that awareness. So each number has a different value. Uh, I, I don't, you don't want me to touch on each number, right, right now? Or do you? Do we have? Uh, you've just given me one hour, huh, guys? <laughs> and I have a lot to tell you. Okay, so quickly. So one is for the sun, Surya. Two is for the moon, 
and I think Sandeep would be way better in explaining all this, but I'm going to quickly numerologically tell you. Three is for Jupiter, which is Guru. Four is for Uranus, which is Rahu. Five is Mercury, which is both. Six is Shukra, which is Venus. Um, all you girls must raise your Shukra energy and get your husband to buy you more diamonds and more uh, luxurious things because uh, that's what it counts for. Seven is for Ketu. Ketu is great for travel and, you know, different kinds of work. Eight is one of my favorite, which is Shani. I don't know why people get scared of it, but I absolutely love it because Shani is a number eight. If it has, it has no in between. If it takes you down, it also takes you up, right? So we have to see both sides of the coin. And nine is for Mars, which is Mangal. So when I'm sitting with you and I'm doing your reading, I first see your numerological chart, understand your strengths and weaknesses, understand how I can take that further and uh, what best I can give you out of that. Then we understand your time zones with numerology, your age energy, your the year energy. We get all that down, get your signature sorted, get your name sorted, and there you've got it. So we've hit, we've hit like a good solid energy zone with that. It does tell us a lot about the past, present, and future. That goes into a little detailed reading. Yeah, any questions on numerology? I'll go further because I want to start with tarot now. Okay, great, great. Can I have some water, please? Tarot, anyone out here who's got a deck of cards and who experiments? No? Really, girls? Experiment with tarot cards? You use it? Fab, fab. So I would recommend everybody to gift yourself a pack of tarot cards and use it because it is by far one of the best sciences that I have come across. In 18 years of working, I don't know if it's the energy, if it's the tarot, if it's my intuition, or if it's the person who I'm reading for, tarot does not go wrong. It, it's, it's like bang on. And someone who's used them and knows how to use them, you'll understand the value of it. Just, just pick up a, a pack of cards, you know, read about it, shuffle them around, play around with them and see what it does to you. Let me explain the signs to you. In the past, so all these sciences basically come from our scriptures, you know, they're, they're not like a new age thing. We've made it like a new age thing, but they're really, uh, they have a history behind it. Tarot was one of the first signs and symbols, you know, we started with numbers, then they got symbols, then they started drawing scriptures, and then from that we got pictures, posters, and things like that. So tarot used to be, you know, in those when we see those uh, Egyptian paintings and all on the wall and everything, it's been brought out from there, right? Different cultures have different uh, kinds of uh, decks. Tarot is a energy deck of cards, which has 78 cards, which basically depict any kind of situation in your life. Now, there are different spreads, there are different ways to do tarot, but it shows you the past. It, sorry, it shows you the path, it shows you the past, the present, and the future. I try to use tarot as a consultancy. I don't like to use it as a prediction. Because the minute I'm telling you, you know what, in 15 days you're going to lose 10 kgs, you'll be like, great. I don't want you to do that, I want you to follow the path. That in order, yes, you will lose the weight, but in order to get there, this is what you need to do. Tarot does not go wrong. My combination of numerology and tarot together gives us answers that we're looking for. That's something that I have seen and learned over the ages, and that's why I've adapted both together. Uh, tarot can tell us about marriage. Tarot can tell you about work. It can tell you about success. It can touch health very strongly. So it's an extremely strong science, but it has more to do with one-on-one -on -one readings. You know, it's not something that you can really do uh, on an open forum. It's, it's a private energy zone. Uh, when you're dealing with the cards, everything basically comes out out there. And um, yeah, but you get your answers. And it's a terrific uh, science to deal with. The third thing is Vastu. Now, everyone, I mean, in today's day and age, there's Feng Shui, there's Vastu, there's energies, there's house energies. But I have kind of understood that Vastu is one of the strongest sciences that we have, uh, where directions are concerned. Vastu is the science of directions. You know, in the olden years, they used to have these houses with the tree in the middle, like the, uh, the Tulsi ka plant, and then they had your houses in a square, and then one more square and one more square. That was all based on Vastu Shastra. The reason your center had the Tulsi is because it's known as the Brahmastan. 
the reason everything came around it is because they wanted things vastu as a principle where you where they want plots in either a square or a rectangular form okay i'm going to quickly touch on um okay a funny question a lot of people say that you know does vastu really work does it really exist does it not it's the science of directions today if you take a compass and today every single phone has a compass and you open it it's going to point to the north side because there's a magnetic force in the north that is pulling an energy so if that little compass can point to that energy and show that to you then how can we not believe that there is a force in this universe and the north has a certain vibration the south has a certain vibration there's a, there's an elevation in one zone there's a deprecation in another zone again don't go crazy about it i'm not saying take your house today with a hammer and start breaking things and make it absolutely vastu compliant no but there's an energy flow that we can create there's something that we can you know uh, manifest out there which gives us that vibration don't you feel sometimes you enter a place and you feel wow this is so beautiful and sometimes you're like you know i don't like the energy of the place just like how we do with people just like how we do with a restaurant so vastu has a lot to do with energies it has a lot to do with direction and it has a lot to do with alignment of those energies and direction that's what we basically work on couple of things that are very very crucial in a house in an office are a your entry which is extremely important entry should always be north northeast or east now this is of course if your house if you already don't have a house which is maybe not vastu compliant then we have remedies for that but this is in case you do have an option or you're taking a new place then then this is what you need to look into second is your kitchen an extremely important place kitchen must and must be in your agni corner which is the southeast of the house your water should be in the north east of your kitchen and your fire should be in the southeast of your kitchen yeah and the third and the most important part is the master bedroom the master bedroom or the office the main office the ceo's office must and must be in the southwest i cannot compromise on that so vastu has a flow northeast starts with light light furniture light um, light energy windows openness uh less expensive you know cheaper fabrics less expensive art going into the southeast which goes into your reds orange uh, yellows which goes into your fire zones and then going into the southwest which is the highest point which needs to be um, you know ornamented it needs to have money out there that's where we put the safe that's where we kind of uh, put an expensive painting and things like that also what you need to understand in any of these sciences before we add we have to declutter we have to remove you know so so if something is off for example i said southeast is the fire zone but if you have a bedroom in the southeast i can't paint it red because i'm only adding fuel to that fire and eventually i'm only aggravating the energy of that that house say for example uh, our son is very aggressive and we put him in the southeast corner he'll only get more aggressive so first we need to know how to declutter how to remove how to make it at a base level and then we start adding value to it vastu definitely works understanding basic principles is very very important one important factor for me is any kind of water water body swimming pool fountain not north east zones must have even if you even if you don't have a door at the northeast zone keep a small water body plug in and keep a small water body in your uh, northeast zone of the house you will see the difference okay when i mean water body not not stagnant water i've seen a lot of this especially out here sorry but i'm going to mention it that you have these urlis you know the big urlis with stagnant water you should never have that there has to be some form of flow unless you keep changing that or put something in it or put a motor in it which has some bubbles or something because stagnancy is just dead energy so in the north northeast we do our water our mandir comes in the north northeast zone and our mirrors come in the north northeast zone because that is a good energy to reflect 
Northwest is a nil energy zone. So we usually keep it for bathrooms, septic tanks and things like that. We don't kind of increase our Northwest. Our Southeast, we can highlight with candles, with fire colors. If you don't have a kitchen in the Southeast, then put some paintings of food or fire or something or something with a little, uh, you know, bright energy in the southeast. And southwest, as I said, is the most important. Definitely add a safe in it. Do it today itself. We will see our mul money multiply. Don't put a mirror opposite the safe. Let it be as it is. Um, don't keep your safe empty. Yeah. And uh, southeast can also have expensive paintings. It can have, you know, anything good that's there. Sorry. Uh, sleeping positions, completely avoid head towards the north. No head facing the north because as I said, when you open the compass, the north pulls. So when you're sleeping like that, there's an energy which is getting drawn from you. Health issues, you know, headaches, feeling drained, feeling lazy when you wake up in the morning. Not that. So south head is fine, east-west head is fine. But trust me guys, the biggest principle of Vastu is declutter. Remove the junk. And it's not only about Vastu, it's even in your life. Remove the unwanted clothes. Remove those bartans that we don't need. Remove those boxes of shoes that are lying. You know, remove those situations from your life that are not required. What did we learn in the lockdown? Less is more. Quality over quantity. I would take it even a step further. Remove those situations and remove those people who are putting us down. Because we really are not in that zone anymore. We don't need that around us, right? All of us are looking for something to uplift us, something that we should feel good about. Which takes me into my next topic, which is energies. Energies is everything and everything is energies. We are all here because of a connection. We are all here because of a frequency. We are all here because of a vibration. Today you send a photo to somebody in a Wi-Fi, it goes in one second. Today you kind of, you know, want to connect with someone sitting in US or wherever, you can do it in a split of a second. What is that? It's energies. And energies are only of two kinds. What are they? I love this crowd. Super. Positive and negative. Before I touch the ne positive, I'm going to talk about the negative. Yes, negative energies exist. Okay, it has to. It's, it's yin and yang, it's plus and minus. It has to exist. But what we need to start doing is, for ourselves, start to change and eliminate those negative energies from our life. Now, I'm not talking about anybody else here. I'm talking about all of us here. We have to start first with ourselves. We can't say, Meko uski nazar lag gai, she's draining me out, I can't work with this person, I can't do this here. Those are all problems. I don't associate with problems. I associate with solutions. Solutions come when you find it yourself. So you start with yourself. Negative energies do exist. One, you do kind of feel negative sometimes, especially if you're in a, you know, you're in a zone which is like kind of depleted you, or if it's with people, or if it's with situations. I will give you three very easy tips to do on a daily basis, which will help you change those negative energies into positive energies. The first thing, your physiology, your body language. It's the most important thing. Now imagine if I was doing this, and I said, hey guys, you know, it's a really positive afternoon today. How all you, you, you just be like, what is she even saying? I'm trying to stand up high, you know, strong. I'm trying to do this so I can give you guys the vibration. And if I'm sitting like this, you know, and somebody comes and tells me, I hate what you're wearing, you're not looking good. I'll say, so? I don't care. Immediately, in 30 seconds, try it out. You know, immediately, let's, let's try it with you. Put your, Shubra, put your, put your shoulders back high. Yeah, sit up straight and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say I don't like what you're wearing. There you go. Now, now the same thing, de deplete your shoulders, put it down, and feel low, and say I look like a million bucks. <laughs> you can't because and you know this is this is scientifically proven because your entire nervous system 
has that kind of a vibration that the minute you change your physiology, your entire energy changes. So for example, you are walking into a meeting or going and, uh, can I sit? Yeah? For example, if I'm walking to a meeting, this is what I do. If I'm walking to a meeting or going, to, going for something important, immediately in the car, I just pull my shoulders back high, get my head up straight. Like you make a line over here, get your head up straight, get your shoulders back high and walk in. Trust me, you'll conquer it. There is no ways you won't. But the same thing, but the same thing if you do with, you know, getting slouched and getting down, you're not going to feel it. So that is the first thing. Physiology is 80% of your negative energy out of the door. And then it also, life is a seesaw. So when you're up like this, automatically the other person comes down. But I'm not saying we need the other person to come down, but we can balance that seesaw, right? The second thing is don't react. Aaj driver nahi aaya, maid nahi aaya, ye nahi hua, wo nahi hua, coffee kaise banega, ye ge kaise gore, hai is not blow dry, this is happening. Don't react, guys. Calm down. Everything does not need a reaction. Okay, I went through a situation this morning, calm, handled it, all went off fine. So it's very, very important to understand these two words, don't react. Some things, yes, of course. I mean, you know, someone's run off with something and you say, no, Shraddha said be calm, but he's running off with my diamond ring, I can see, but I'll be calm. No, please don't do that. Then please run after him and react. But for a lot of things, you really don't need to react and you'll see it'll change. Today, for example, your staff person comes and he drops the coffee and you'll be like, kya kya kal nahi hai, kya this and that. That person is going to go back and only say bad things about you. Whether or not he says it on your face. You know how they say in a restaurant, don't tell the waiter anything, we don't know if he's going to go and spit in our food or not inside. So let's not get into that situation. Same thing if we had told him later that, listen, this is what you did and uh, He'll feel sorry about it. He'll feel bad about it. And then he'll want to make a difference the next time and want to sort it out. And the third thing and most important is every single thing in this universe has a silver lining. As bad as it is, as bad as COVID was, there was a silver lining somewhere. You know, we all learned to live differently. We all understood so much about life. Reality hit us. We can, we can tell our entire generations to come, we went through a pandemic. When was the last one? 1912? We don't even know those people, at least we went through something. Besides that, I mean, good or bad, at least there's some silver lining. You would always see, you know, like, God forbid, someone is suffering with health also, and they pass away or something. Then we always say, you know, but they didn't suffer as much, or this didn't happen, or that didn't happen, or so-and-so went peacefully in their sleep. There's always and always a silver lining, guys. Learn to see that. So the three things that you need to follow to become from negative to positive are your physiology, your body language, don't react and see the silver lining. And literally, it's taking me 18 years to realize it's as simple as these three things. There is no fourth thing. You can turn and twist it however you want. After that, you come into a positive zone. Now, when you are in a positive zone, literally, the world is your oyster. That's when you start to attract, you become like a magnet. Because everything around you is giving out that vibration, right? It's giving that vibration. You're feeling that, okay, I want to talk to this person. I want to get to know what this person is saying. I want to be like them. Why? Because they're emitting out that energy. When you're positive is when the magic starts. And that magic is known as the law of attraction. That magic is known as manifestation. That magic is known as visualization. Does anyone practice this out here? Guys, uh, big clap for all the ones who put your hands up. And for the ones who haven't, let me tell you one thing. This is as important as brushing your teeth and having a bath. Okay? If you're not manifesting your life, you're either way manifesting. Let me tell you this, you're either way attracting. But either you will do it consciously or you will do it unconsciously. So the ones who are not attracting consciously are attracting unconsciously. That's when you don't know what is going on. That's when you feel, Arya, I went out, I got wet in the rain. Because your energy is thinking that. But when I go out and it's raining, somehow I have an umbrella. I have something to protect me. I, I, I had planned my day, this, this happened, this went wrong, that went wrong, this went wrong, because you're manifesting that. But when I start my day, I make sure that I have put it out there in the universe. And it follows that path. That happens to me. 
you know so it's extremely important to learn the art of manifestation because you're either way going to be using it life is going to go up and down like the like the heart rate the day it stops that means we are all dead so while it's going up and down it's your choice how you're going to monetize it manifestation is extremely important i am going to give you a set of daily things to do and how we should do it and how we shouldn't do it before that um uh, how many of you have told somebody i love you in my life super lovely how many of you have told yourself i love me i like that okay so so i'm coming back to hyderabad again for sure because i like this group i love me that's my um uh, that's my mantra that's that's what i practice and preach every single day of my life okay now i'm going to add up everything astrology 100% numerology yes tarot of course it works vastu 100% it works but tell me something guys i can make you wear the perfect stone sandeep can clear up all your astrological charts i can get perfect vastu done in your house everything can be fine but if you're not going to work along with us nothing is going to work for you so the first thing we need to understand is loving ourselves it all starts from you the day you fall in love with yourself and there's a difference it's not being selfish it's self love the day you realize the importance of self love and loving yourself the entire universe will change and work in your favor So please start waking up in the morning and start loving yourself and telling yourself I love me. Yeah? When we start to do that and then we get into manifestation mode as I told you the magic starts. I would like to share a daily routine for all of you to do on a regular basis. What can can someone can one or two of you just tell me what do you do when you wake up somebody who's into manifestation? love it and okay super so everyone's getting it absolutely right first 5 minutes when you wake up and you're on your bed don't step down sit on your bed and ask for gratitude what is gratitude gratitude is just thanking the universe thanking your higher power thanking that god who you believe in thanking those energies who are with you thanking whoever you want just being grateful about you about being there and about waking up in the morning why because the more grateful you are the more the universe will give you things to be grateful about yes the second thing that we do make it a habit at least for the next 21 days starting today if possible or tomorrow because today is gone where you maintain a journal when we write in our journal we are making it a we are we are making it on stamp paper how you go to a lawyer and it's all written and documented and it's on stamp paper and we take it ahead so that's what our journal does it's a it's a documented fact that we've written this and we mean it I am so grateful that and write the three things that you want out of your life it could be anything it could be health it could be wealth it could be relations honestly there is no other fourth thing you can twist it and turn it however you want but it's always about health wealth or relations uh, health about me about my family wealth will even cover you know studies intelligence going into work going into something ahead and relations would cover any kind of relations i am so grateful that i am this 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 that's a short and sweet huh? the universe doesn't have that much time to read essays so let's keep it really short sweet and crisp and the more you write and ask the more it will want to give you and provide so we write that close your eyes and visualize your end result that's how manifestation is done we don't see the path we don't see how or when honestly i never prepare for any of my talks i only close my eyes and i sit and visualize the people sitting around me 
and honestly i had this vision that i'm going to have these beautifully cladded women with sarees and looking so stunning and i can't even carry myself in a saree but that was my vision and that exactly is what's in front of me so literally visualize your end result you know if you want to go abroad what do we do we we buy the ticket and we've already uh, we've already telling everybody i'm going to us i'm going to africa i'm going here you're not bothered about how will the flight take me will there be a bump will he be crossing this ocean will that happen will i reach will i know we we are not uh, we are not bothered about that we just know our destination you go to a restaurant and order a meal i've ordered this 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 thing i think ye yeah, this is uh, i close it we go to a restaurant and we order a meal we are not telling the cook acha pehle aap ye bhigao chawal fir aap andar dalna we just know that our meal is going to be ready visualization has to be the end result you want your child to get these marks only focus on that don't go and tell him that you're not studying you're dumb you're not doing this you're doing that your friends are doing better than you you're manifesting incorrect darling you cannot do that uh you want a certain job you want a certain position see yourself over there you know i mean you want to be uh, acclaimed you want to be in a certain zone visualize that this is how it's going to be and it's done that is your contract with the universe once you do that in the morning then just just do like 2 3 minutes of a deep breathing it's extremely important because it's kind of churning your chakras it's kind of opening your inner space it's kind of just waking your energies up and then go off with your day that's it just go on with your day do what you have to do during the day then the two important things in the night and this is most crucial one is cutting cords and i'm going to touch that after 2 minutes because that's linked with something else and the last thing is something known as bubbling bubbling is extremely important bubbling basically means i visualize myself in this bubble it could be gold it could be yellow it could be white it could be pink it could be whatever you want and only and only positive energies people situation and circumstances touch my bubble nothing else can come close to me i can put my children in that bubble i can put whoever i want in the bubble it's very 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 powerful please start to do this someone's going on a flight they're going on a long road journey they're traveling put them in that bubble and see the magic because you've kind of signified and protected them right now coming to cord cutting why does is anyone uh, does anyone know about cord cutting and the importance of it super so I was talking to Sandeep about this on the way uh and I think this topic everyone will connect to which is nazar right nazar meaning sight good energies and bad energies good sight and bad sight today hum sabko nazar lagti hai because you know you're seeing someone you're like oh my god you're looking so pretty but you may feel she said it to me in this way or you may feel okay she said it to me you know good sight way or bad sight way but aise kuch nahi hota hai it's the amount we kind of take on to us yes we are living in a period where uh, jealousy does exist you know there is competition there is a lot of that but i always say till we can handle it why not today if there's a glass i can break it easily but today if i throw iron down i can't break it don't be that glass don't be so weak minded don't get so affected be like iron so even if someone tries to put that nazar on you it does not affect you having said that in case that happens and you do get drained with certain people certain situations certain energies and you can't do anything then cut cords it is the best thing to do you can do it for 3 minutes in the night and it is one of the most powerful exercises to be done visualize yourself sitting here visualize the other person or the situation or whoever you want sitting in front of you take an imaginary knife and just cut cords from head to toe and toe to head back and forth two to three times and let go of that energy then you're left with nothing and then just bubble yourself it is fantastic so guys you're going to wake up in the morning and ask for gratitude you're going to pull out a journal you're going to write down the three points that you want to manifest you're going to do a little bit of deep breathing go on with your day in a positive manner in case something negative happens what do we do we change our physiology we change our body language we don't react and we see the silver lining again we go on with our day again something happens again we do this routine till it becomes a part of you it's going to become like breathing literally it'll become like breathing and i want it to because what's more important 
It's as important as that, right? Every breath that you're taking, you want it to be a positive one. You want to make it count. Why do they say make every breath count? Because you want to do that to yourself. And then in the night, we come home and we cut. We cut cords and we bubble ourselves. Very, very simple things. They don't cost anything except for your time. And time is what we have. So let's utilize it well. Also, um, the importance. I want to touch the importance of a few things that I want everyone to do in their house on a daily basis. I believe in the power of salt a lot. I was trying to see how I was looking. <laughs> I believe in the power of salt a lot. So pink Himalayan salt is an extremely strong um, energy cleanser. Don't use normal Tata Namak, sorry, if anyone's from there, don't use normal Namak, use pink Himalayan salt because it's great for cleansing. You also get pink Himalayan soaps, you can call them online or, you know, get them through different sources. Use them on a daily basis, fistful into your mop and just tell your staff they have to clean the house, they have to clean um, the office, they have to clean everything with pink Himalayan salt every day. You must take a bath with it daily. Either you keep it in a bottle in your house, or nowadays there are soaps available. You can just use it as a soap on a regular basis. Sage. Sage is one of the most powerful energy cleansers. Go on to Amazon, order for sage on a full moon night, on a new moon night. Sage yourself, sage your house, and you'll see the difference. It's fantastic. Yeah. Third, declutter, as I already mentioned. On a regular basis, remove one thing from your life you will be very, very happy. And fourth, and most important, follow your intuition, because when you get on this path of understanding these sciences, of doing these cleanses, of, of you know, um, knowing what is all around us, of learning tarot, of learning about all this, following your intuition is extremely important, because that is the way the universe talks to us. It talks to us in signs and symbols. And that's the reason we need to do that. We follow our intuition and most important, love yourself. Thank you. I don't know how much time it is. You need me to touch another topic. You want me to extend on something or we're good? Okay, so we're good with, we, we time this thing, right? Bound. All right, guys. Thanks a lot, Ms. Shraddha Sala, for such an exemplary and insightful session. Now, as we commence our second part of the session, I'd like to request our chairperson, Ms. Shubra Maheshwari, and our guest speaker, Dr. Sandeep Kocher, to grace the dais. Our chairperson, Ms. Shubra Maheshwari, to felicitate Dr. Sandeep Kocher with a flow memento. Events team, can we have the memento, please? It is indeed my pleasure to introduce our very dynamic speaker, Dr. Sandeep Kocher, a man of many talents. Dr. Sandeep Kocher is an internationally renowned celebrity astrologer, Vastu consultant, motivational speaker, life coach, actor, anchor, and author. He has been awarded as the most trusted astrologer in India. Dr. Kocher is among the top World famous, top 10 world famous Indian astrologers who has read the horoscopes of the serving president of India and vice president of India. He predicted the winner of the US elections of Barack Obama and Donald Trump based on their respective horoscopes. He has received numerous accolades such as the International Achievers Award, Masters of Wisdom, Pride of India, Brand Ambassador of Astrology, Limca Book of Records, Glory of India, Super Achievers Awards, just to name a few. He has also appeared in many television shows such as Bachke Rehna, Guiding Stars, What's Your Rashi, Kismat Connection, Sandeep Kochar Ke Saath, which have been viewed in over 120 countries. With his profound understanding of astrology, face reading, and palmistry, he is able to liberate the person through the freedom of understanding oneself better. His motivational and inspirational insights have changed the lives of thousands worldwide. Welcome Dr. Sandeep Kocher, and thank you for being here with us. I now request Dr. Kocher to take us through the session. 
good evening everyone uh, this is my pleasure to be here and i would like to thank fikki flo for giving me this opportunity especially shubhra maheshwari ji for giving me this honor so it was lovely meeting you and uh, because uh, shraddha has, has said it all so we'll meet up next time and i'll come with more preparation <laughs> because i uh, you know i i was just jotting down and she ticked whatever i i i thought i will talk about <laughs> but anyways <clears throat> so basically i'm a astrologer and it's been uh, 22 years uh, with my journey of astrology and i believe astrology is nothing but it is your life because it begins from the word in sanskrit called prarabdh the deeds done in the past birth and everything is responsible because of that because first thing which you cannot choose is your parent तो जब आप पैदा हो रहे थे आपको पता नहीं था कि आप बच्चन बनेंगे गांधी बनेंगे मोदी बनेंगे अंबानी बनेंगे और कहीं के नहीं रहेंगे यू नो सो वी हैड नो क्लू सो वी कान चूज एनी थिंग इवन इफ यू रन अवे विद समन एंड गेट मैरिड इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ डेस्टनी बिकॉज आई बिलीव इन दैट एवरी थिंग इज प्री रिटर्न एवरी थिंग इज प्री डिस्टेंट बट एज श्रद्धा सेट आई डू बिलीव इन दैट ऑल्सो बिकॉज आई हैव टू से इट नो आई आई बिलीव इन दैट ऑल्सो बिकॉज i believe in free will as well so 70% is free it is your destiny you are not free you are bounded with 70% of what you are as i have said from your birth to whatever you are and 30% is what you do what you choose how you utilize your energies your opportunities it depends on that so a person who is running a great time of his life may get 70 out of 70 what if a person is running a really a bad phase of his life but is still very confident very optimistic and spiritual and having faith in him and in god khud aur khuda par yakeen you know i believe in that because divine energies if you really want to be successful uh, successful is not the right word if you really want to be happy because i believe a person who is happy is successful so if you really want to be happy there has to be some divine energies associated with you B without that you are just running or maybe you are in some kind of grind you may boast of those kind of materialistic achievements but it will never give you contentment this is what i have understood in my 20 years 22 years of my journey with astrology my clients are billionaire in dollars and pounds but uh, one thing i have understood is i'm not boasting here what i'm saying is i have understood that money has no connection with your inner, inner peace your harmony and your happiness that means there is something which is beyond that so i'm here to talk about uh, make the cosmos work for you so how do we do that the first thing is cosmos is nothing but it is you so you are the energy you are the soul and you are the power so you have to first look within like shraddha mentioned about uh, this pandemic uh, you know era which is first time in our lifetime we have experienced and god willing it, it must be the last time you know and uh, nothing happened Lot of, lots of people lost their jobs, uh, their businesses, even lives and livelihoods. So it was definitely a very unprecedented time, and uh, we have luckily almost passed that. And we have realized. Uh, now I'm getting clients actually with a different mindset. What we were used to before pandemic era, like you know, uh, earlier we used to, we used to say, uh, you know, before crisis and whatever. Now we are talking about that era before pandemic. We were more different. we were more materialistic still there are few because as i say some are wise and most are otherwise uh, so we le learn to you know we have to evolve we need to learn to make it better so i think we have realized there is more than what we really desire and that is your happiness i always say you know i, I am a poet actually so shubhra ji has already told me uh, there are people you know few of them understand hindi and few of them for them i need to translate my poetry in telugu which i really can't do so if some if there is a translator i would be happily uh, sharing my uh, you know million dollar poetry with you so no the poetry is in hindi uh, unfortunately okay that's great that's amazing so you have made my life simple because uh, i'm a poet you know so so i, I wrote it once ki khush naseeb hain wo log jo khush raha karte hain they say happy go lucky khush naseeb hain wo log jo khush raha karte hain aur aise sitare kis kaam ke जो रात भर जगा करते हैं 
तो दिस पोइट्री इज एंटी एस्ट्रोलॉजी बट एस्ट्रोलॉजी इज माई ब्रेड एंड बटर एस्ट्रोलॉजी इज माई लाइफ आई हैव चेंज कम्प्लीटली फ्रॉम वॉट आई बिगेन विद एंड वॉट एस्ट्रोलॉजी हैज मेड मी एंड टॉट मी इन द जर्नी ऑफ लाइफ एंड सो आई रियली थैंक दिस डिवाइन पावर्स डिवाइन एनर्जीज एंड द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल माई टी एंड माई एल्डर्स एंड हु एवर एंड आई आई बिलीव दिस इज माई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सो आई एम हेयर नॉट यू नो जस्ट टू टूर दिस प्लेस आई बीन हेयर अर्लियर बट आई फील एवरी वन हु इज प्रेजेंट हेयर दे हैव ए कनेक्शन दे इज नथिंग यू नो यू आर नॉट हेयर जस्ट लाइक दैट देर इज नो को इंसिडेंस इन दिस लाइफ इन उर्दू दे से आई मीन हैदराबाद यू नो उर्दू इज इज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर यू नो आई थिंक यू गो फॉर शॉपिंग यू टॉक इन या सो देर इज नो इतफाक सो देर इज इतफाक दिस वन वर्ड आई मेड ए पोइट्री विद ओनली वन वर्ड हाउ इट कैन बी पॉसिबल and it the fuck has two meanings it the fuck se you know it has got two meanings by chance one is by chance and one if you don't agree with me that is it the fuck right i hope you agree with me okay thank you so tumse milna bhi ittefaq tha tumse milna bhi ittefaq tha aur tumse bichhadna bhi ittefaq hai abhi main abhi main yahi hu bas to tumse milna bhi ittefaq tha aur tumse bichhadna bhi ittefaq hai ab tumhe ittefaq nahi to ye bhi ittefaq hai but i believe there is no coincidence so we here you know together shraddha almost missed her flight and even i was adamant not to board the flight without her because that was the, uh, she has instructed me to come along with her so luckily we are all here so uh, it is not by chance it was meant to be like this anyways so moving on uh, it is power to empower uh, you know i just read it uh, the tagline of your fikki floor main man mein ye soch raha tha yaar aur kitna empower karoge you know <laughs> so i'm i am really happy you know i do have a wife and a daughter so i understand the power of wife and uh, i really want my daughter to to be uh, you know a better version of my wife but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so as shada uh, spoke about venus you know that was one thing which i already crossed because she spoke about it and uh, venus is the most beautiful planet in astrology and whenever you you show your horoscope to any astrologer he will look first at jupiter the planet of wisdom knowledge spirituality blessing prosperity and the next planet which we he will look or should look is venus because venus define what kind of luxury what kind of happiness joy and uh, goodies you will get in this life you know a beautiful house uh, a beautiful car your wardrobe your interiors you know um, you're all beautiful here so maybe sometime handsome husband so everything you know is related to venus how beautiful your life is so it depends on how strong your venus is and where it is placed in your horoscope but i believe in one thing whenever you know a person comes to me and uh, yeah so whenever a person comes to me and uh, he asks about my ki when i will have my house or another house or maybe another car or sometime another no let it be so uh, i always uh, tell them you know if you really want to upgrade your life if you really want to upgrade your life you need to make your wife happy i know i know it is a task it is a task you know i'm married since uh, 25 years sorry acha yeah so uh, she really want me to uh, she really want to quote me so if you really want to prosper if you really want to grow this is all about for men there are only cameramen here but anyways this is all about men if you really want to prosper and grow and upgrade your life in every possible way please make your own wife happy so i corrected it so i always say ki aapki khud ki wife you know aapki khud ki wife i need to specify because abhi waqt badal gaya many times i have done counseling for a couple and then uh, while going they said she was not my wife so yeah so i now i have to ask her how are you related she is my wife okay so if your own wife is happy because of you that is also important because sometimes neighbors are also you know <laughs> so if your own wife is happy because of you your venus will become stronger and then you will get all the luxuries in your life that means the more happy a woman is the more luxuries comfort and everything good joy even will come to you so is all about venus and i always say ki shuk rahe to shuk rahe kyunki agar shukr na hota venus na hota you know venus is all about beauty to hum sab ek jaise lagte to agar aina na hota aina is mirror right so agar aina na hota to haqeeqat na hoti introspection she was talking about love yourself know yourself talk to yourself and i loved it 
ہر کہنے والا تھا تو اگر آئینہ نہ ہوتا تو حقیقت نہ ہوتی پھر خود کو کیسے پہچانتے ہم سو انٹروسپیکشن از اے موسٹ امپورٹنٹ تھنگ بٹ وی نیور ڈو بیکاز یہی میری خود سے پہچان ہو گئی یو نو اٹ از ویری ڈیفیکلٹ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ یور اون سیلف یور اون بینگ بیکاز وی آر رننگ بہائنڈ سم تھنگ وی آر ان گرائنڈ بیکاز آف اوور ریسپانسبلٹیز ایز ویل آئی ایم ناٹ بلیمنگ اینی ون ہیئر بٹ واٹ ایم سینگ از وی نیڈ ٹو پوز وی نیڈ ٹو لک ود ان کیونکہ رفتار زندگی کی بڑھ گئی ہے کچھ اس قدر رفتار زندگی کی بڑھ گئی ہے کچھ اس قدر تیلگو میں کیسے بتائیں گے رفتار زندگی کی کچھ بڑھ گئی ہے اس قدر کہ وہ بھی بھاگ رہے ہیں جنہیں کہیں جانا نہیں سو یو آر رننگ آفٹر سم تھنگ وچ ایون ڈزنٹ ایگزٹ اور از ناٹ مینڈ فار یو اینڈ مے بی دا ٹائم از ناٹ رائٹ فار یو سو واٹ آئی آئی ایم سینگ از گو ود دا فلو دس از دا بیوٹی آف لائف اینڈ آئی ہیو انڈرسٹوڈ اینڈ آئی امپلائی ایوری ڈے ان مائی لائف آئی ڈونٹ پلان آئی ایم اے میزریبل پلانر اٹ شوڈ ناٹ آئی شوڈ ناٹ بی سینگ اٹ بیکاز آلریڈی ٹین پیپل ہیو ڈیسائڈ ناٹ ٹو کم ٹو می سو اینڈ مائی جاب از ٹو ہیلپ ایوری ون پلان دے لائف دیٹ مائی بزنس بٹ آئی بلیو ان ون تھنگ آئی ہیو انڈرسٹوڈ واٹ ایور ہیز ٹو ہیپن ہیپن تو اگر سب کچھ لکھا جا چکا ہے تو ہم کیا کریں سو آئی آلویز سی گو ود دا فلو کیونکہ فرام مائی بالکنی وین وین آئی سی سی یو نو سن سیٹ ایوری ڈے از اے بیوٹیفل سی ان ممبئی آئی آلویز سی آئی روٹ اٹ ونس زندگی تو محض ایک دریا ہے پوئٹری زیادہ تو نہیں ہوگی غصے میں دیکھ رہی اچھا تو زندگی لاسٹ ہے تو زندگی تو محض ایک دریا ہے بہتے چلو بس یہی ایک ذریعہ ہے سو کیپ گوئنگ ود دا فلو اینڈ انجوائے یور مومنٹ اس سے خوبصورت مجھے نہیں لگتا یو نو سو ناؤ ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ اسپیکٹ از لائف اینڈ آئی تھنک دا سینونیم فار لائف از ہیپینیس سو یو نیڈ ٹو بی ان اے ہیپی اسپیس ہاؤ ٹو ڈو اٹ اٹ از ویری ڈیفیکلٹ وی ہیو ایسپیریشنس وی ہیو ریسپانسبلٹیز ریسپانسبلٹی یو نو ٹوورڈز اوور فرسٹ ان لاز ویری ڈیفیکلٹ از اے تھاؤزینڈ ایئرز اولڈ اسٹوری اینڈ یو نو دیز نو وے آؤٹ اینڈ ایون نو ون ہیز ریمیڈی ٹو اٹ بٹ وی ہیو ٹو لو ود رائٹ سو ون از ان لاز سو پھر یو ہیو ٹو ہیو ریسپانسبلٹیز ٹوورڈز یو نو یو بینگ فرسٹ ڈاٹر ان لا ناؤ موسٹ آف دیم آر مدر ان لاز آئی شوڈ ناٹ بی سنگ دیٹ بٹ اٹ لکس لائک اینڈ دین ایز اے وائف تو یو ہیو اے گریٹ ریسپانسبلٹی ایز ایز اے وائف رائٹ اینڈ اٹ از ناٹ ایزی ٹو ہینڈل سم ون ہو who behaved like uh, Ranveer Kapoor or Shah Rukh Khan before marriage and now he's become Nana Patekar. <laughs> so, but it is your responsibility, you know, to be with him. Amazing. And then as a mother, which is the most difficult and most beautiful journey. And I salute my mother because whatever I'm here is all because of her blessings. I believe in that. Without those, you know, divine energies, divine blessings and the blessings of your mom is something great. Why? Because the Indian astrology is based on moon. All air planets influence only one planet, which is moon. That is the reason the movie came out with the name called What is Your Rashi? Even you go to astrologer, he will ask you what, or tell you basically what is your Rashi? Because Rashi is nothing but your moon, where your moon is placed and that is how you feel. It is not how you look, it is how you feel. So your moon sign plays a very important role in this life. If anyone who has a beautiful moon sign, the person will always be smiling. And anyone who has a mis not miserable, uh, uh, afflicted moon sign, the person will be complaining, sulking, Uh, you know, uh, getting irritated by small little things and having that kind of pessimistic ideas. So that is not great. And I, that is the reason I, I have got a lot of doctors as my client and even anyone who is uh, a gynecologist, I always tell them, please tell your patients whoever wish to conceive or is already pregnant if she's married, then she should, uh, you know, be in a happy space. Because you can't manipulate your planets. There is only one planet which you can manipulate and that is moon. And every mother will always wish for one thing about her child and that is the child should be happy. And that is the reason whenever we seek blessings, parents, you know, especially um, uh, you're, uh, you're all young here, but people who are from other, another generation, they always still say, khush raho beta. Khush raho is the biggest blessing. They never say, ki tum ko ek aur ghar lelo, ek aur gaadi lelo, aur shadi karlo, whatever. But khush raho. So how to be happy? only with uh, with with the good moon what you have in life and how to manipulate it so a mother who is pregnant or is planning pregnancy uh, should make sure that no matter what no matter who is your husband or what kind of situation your in laws have you should be in a happy space and if you will choose to be happy during those nine months i promise you your child will always thank you for the rest of his her life 
Because the moon is emotion of anyone. If I'll see a, you know, your horoscope, maybe I have my computer here. If you want, I can tell you who you are in, in 10 seconds. So if you, if you want your child to be happy, you need to be happy for the rest, you know, for the, those nine months. And if, even if you are, few of them looks like uh, they are already uh, mother-in-laws. So you have to, you have to tell your daughter-in-law to choose to be happy and you have to treat her well for those nine months at least. So moon is the most important thing in life. You know, we, call, we, we, we talk about dasha. Pandit ji, kya dasha chal rahi hai? Bole, abhi aapki rahu ki dasha chal rahi hai. Abhi aapki shani ki dasha chal rahi You know, I've changed my tone. Because unfortunately, this is a divine science. But fortunately, unfortunately, this business of astrology has become business of fear and lies. The more fear I can put in your mind, the more I will be able to, you know, extract. But what I'm saying is, even the dasha is calculated from the nakshatra which resides inside your moon. That means the entire astrology, if anyone, I don't know how many of you believe in it and how many are willing to learn astrology, you will see how moon plays a role. The greatest planet, I, was, I always say, um, you, you know, mother of astrology. Mother of astrology is moon. So if, if you are happy, if you create your moon, forget about your child, forget about you uh, getting pregnant again. I'm talking about your own state of mind. Your state of mind, your happiness, is depending on your moon. So how to make it happy now because you are born already with what kind of moon you have? The answer is meditate. People who meditate every day, people who meditate every day, they are always happy. So uh, I really want to know uh, if you have any belief in meditation, please uh, raise your hand. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 11, 15 and a half, 17. Good. <laughs> So it's a good number actually, because you know, when yoga became yoga, it became popular in India. When meditation became mindfulness, now it has become popular in India. And mindfulness is nothing but Indian meditative techniques, which they have rebranded. And now the entire world, US or even Europe, you know, they are talking about mindfulness. So my dear friends, I would suggest you to meditate. That is the only remedy which will work because one statement which I use every day in my life is destiny is fixed. Destiny is fixed. No one can change, but a change is change when you change. So today, if you take a vow to be in a happy space, no matter what, I promise you, you don't need any astrologer. But you should utilize my, uh, you know, this opportunity because I'm here from Mumbai. But anyways, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, have little faith towards your Almighty. Whatever, because even you can't choose your religion. You're born in a family, now you, you are... No, I will not say force, but it will come to you naturally. Whatever faith you have, please believe in that. Meditate and have that faith, which can definitely make your moon happy, which will make you happy, and it will change everything around you. Now, she spoke about, because, you know, I have crossed all this list, so whatever is left, I am talking about. She spoke about declutter, right? In Vasu, so I am not into Vasu, but I am just uh, talking about it. Uh, declutter, what? your thoughts in your mind. That is the most important area, you know, which influence your life. We are mostly either thinking about the past or having concerns about future. And as I've told you, me being an astrologer, and this sounded like unprofessional statement, but I believe in it. Whatever has to happen will happen. Lama lama hai zindagi. To kal ka zikr kyu karein? Lama lama hai zindagi to kal ka zikr kyun karein aur joh beed gai so baad gai to kal ki fikr kyun karein. So I think yeh aap declutter kar dijiye life is so beautiful. Trust me it is really simple. Life mein mene I have seen people who are spiritual who meditate they are always happy. You can see the faces without any makeup and they are glowing. So this energy is coming from within. It is divine energy we, we are talking about. And that is all I believe in. Astrology, life, everything is based on energies and vibration. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Law of conservation of energy set. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So you need to transform. It is not what you are. This is, I am born with this kind of planets. My moon is like this and whoever. This could be the moment of change. Bring that change in you. Take it as a message. Not every day astrologer will come and tell you 
everything will be sorted just like that. Today she spoke about a lot of good things. And I am talking about only one, one, one element is about your state of mind. Destiny, definitely, <clears throat> it is your journey. You have to undergo whatever process, whatever goes has, uh, up has to come down. Vice versa is a law of nature. But time keep on changing because nothing is permanent. So today, if you are in a situation, tomorrow things will change. And astrology is utilized only for that. You know your address from your office to your home. And you know you may reach in 40 minutes. Like, you know, it does from your airport to this place. But you don't know that that day there is a traffic jam or there is some diversion. GPS tells you that, right? You are not going to reach in 40 minutes. It may take two hours today. Astrology exactly do the same. It is a GPS of your life which tells you about the journey of your life, where you are heading, what obstructions, hurdles or traffic jam you will be facing in this life and what to do about it. So one is acceptance. So astrology doesn't mean that you come to me and I'll change everything like this. No. Astrology can tell you what you are, where you are heading and what you can expect. So sometime, even being a motivator, I have to discourage someone that your time is not right. Hang on for one and a half years, two years, depending on individual situation. So if you understand that, you will lower your expectation, you will enhance your acceptance and that will make your life simple. So I think astrologer can be your best friend for life. Don't follow astrology every day, though I post it on my Instagram, you can follow me. That was a good idea. Yeah. So, but at the same time, go at least once to a astrologer and understand your journey, your purpose of life, your strength, your weakness, your potential. I'm not here to judge you. Everyone is different. I may be having 10 flaws. But the day you realize about your own weaknesses and you start working on it, that is the time you will change. So the change is change when you change. Vasu plays a very important role as she said and uh, Vasu along with your time makes a perfect situation. Even you know tarot, tarot has a great meaning every card because it's all intuitive. They will give you answers like this which even astrologer can tell, no, can tell you because astrology goes for a long term and it, it has a broader perspective towards your life. But any kind of sciences, numerology, tarot, astrology, even energies, reiki, it, it is all about knowing yourself and planning your life. So I think it is a great idea, it is a great opportunity for all of you to connect and whoever your personal stories are, even you can, you can go to them. But do not, uh, you know, <clears throat> get trapped into that. I have seen people calling stories every day, ki aaj ka din kaisa jayega, kal ka kaisa jayega. That is not a great idea. Understand things where, where it is from and plan your life. Every planet has a significance. If, if you want, I can, you know, briefly uh, in one liner, I'll tell you. We'll begin with sun. Sun is soul, sun is purity, sun is idealism, planet sun, S-U-N, and sun is father. When you have to check about your father in every horoscope, we look at sun. So a person born around daytime, you know, around noontime, the person always blessed with a good upbringing. And I always say, ki the day your, your son or daughter is born, even you started doing good. And it is always correct. Because son means the bringing of the child will be great and father has to do great. So sometimes even you don't know, you in the sense, your husband, ki who is horoscope is working. As I already said, I believe in Venus, I believe in Lady Luck, I already said that, that you know, your smiling faces can bring more prosperity in life. So same goes with your children. So one horoscope can change your life. So son is all about soul, values, ideals and recognition because it rules fifth house, the house of learning, the house of the deeds done in the past birth and even your uh, recognition in the life, what seat or what position you will reach depending on what kind of sun you have in your horoscope. So that is one. Sun also give you pride, sun also give you a person who is born early morning between 5 to 7 in the morning or born between 15th April to 15th May when sun gets exalted, the, the, the nose of that, that person will be really high. You know, there, there are few Mohabras from the past, you know, they say, Unchi nag wale, nag war makki nahi badne dete, nag kat jayegi. Why nag? Kaan kyun nahi kata? Because nose signifies your pride. 
so a person you know like uh, i i incorporate palmistry face reading and horoscope every part of your body you know your eyebrows your nose your ears your eyes everything has a reason and even while looking at you i can understand what kind of planet you will be having in your horoscope so if it is so beautiful so a person who has exalted sun can have this kind of pride self respect and dignity don't talk to me like this even child will tell you dad don't talk to me like this but there is another synonym to it is ego ego get hurt so i i think if anyone who has a strong son i will request them please let go that ego because i've seen ego plays a very very big role in any kind of situation it could be relationship of any kind actually so be more more humble sometime let go because i believe in life is not about court of this is not a court of law where you need to prove who is right or wrong life is all about harmony happiness joy togetherness love romance so let go that ego another planet is moon which i already explained which is the most beautiful planet moon talks about your harmony moon talks about your peace in life how loving you are how caring you are how kind you are how compassionate you are it depends on where your moon is placed people who have moon in 8th house they become really emotional they they are too sensitive everything you know they take it to their heart people who have moon on the ascendant they become very kind caring you know they can go out of way and help everyone they are so beautiful people people moon in 4th house for them harmony is most important family is more important than anything else in life they are so beautiful but a moon is weak again i will remind you please meditate the only remedy to make your moon happy is to to have a little bit more faith towards your god and meditate for 10 minutes early morning late night even while lying down on the bed in the car if you're not driving or in the flight so there you can meditate so it will make your moon really happy mars it is again one of the most important planet in astrology because mars talk about energy mars talk about initiative koshish karne walon ki kabhi har nahi hoti aur lehro zadar ke nauke kabhi par nahi hoti bachchan sahab ki awaaz nahi nikal sakte hum to that is how you, I, i really love it actually so moon is uh, mars is all about taking initiative so if you if you not give it try it will never work कोशिश ही नहीं की तो होगा कैसे आई ऑलवेज यूज टू से आई यूज टू डू शो ऑन जी न्यूज विच ही जस्ट रिमाइंडेड दैट माई नेम केम इन टू लिम का बिक ऑफ रिकॉर्ड बिकॉज शो बिकेम द लॉन्गेस्ट रनिंग शो एवर सो आई ऑलवेज यूज टू से कि करोगे नहीं तो होगा कैसे सोचोगे नहीं तो होगा कैसे देन आई रियलाइज कि निकलोगे नहीं तो पहुंचोगे कैसे सो इट इज इनिशिएटिव यू हैव टू सो मार्स प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल एंड एनी वन हुज ए स्ट्रॉग मार्स मेन और वेमेन दे विल हैव स्ट्रॉग आईब्रोज एंड एनी वन हुज ए स्ट्रॉग आईब्रोज यू नो your beauty parlor whoever you know she will have really tough time because your eyebrows will be really dense really strong but that shows your authority that shows your leadership skills your dominance i got married 25 years back i started doing a story 22 years back so i made a mistake but now i guide everyone <laughs> to, to know your spouse anyways so mars is all about you know people who are into armed forces police people who are into sports they have all strong mars because the energy is always high and these are the people with the strong eyebrows or strong mars basically they never retire they never give up and they have will have energy throughout that is something which is so beautiful mercury the planet of intelligence the most important planet actually in this era the planet of intelligence the planet of thinking communication marketing banking media communication writing networking humor friendship so mercury plays a very important role you know a new born child will start talking and saying pepsi before learning to say mother mummy because everything is like that induced marketing now a child is in fed with every kind of advertisement now so it is all about marketing so you need to market your emotions also i have seen many a times you know maybe for the sake of harmony like i just said or maybe you don't want to hurt anyone or you don't want to tell your husband there is something wrong with whatever i i always believe you have to share you have to talk you have to express the more you will bring out your emotion like this with communication the more easy the more stress free you will be so please talk find one or two friends around you with whom you can confine you can share very very important otherwise if you keep on accumulating then this these thoughts will become stress which will lead to anxiety and anxiety may create that kind of chemical emotional imbalance in body which can create some kind of turbulence in your body 
And this is what medical scientists and doctors all over the globe, they say, everything has become psychosomatic. Bodily disorder formed by human brain. When I was in London, I read an article, it said, doctors will keep on telling you it is all in the mind. And that article said, they, had, they have discovered another phenomena known as BDS, bodily distress syndrome. That means body understands something from the mind and then they say, we have no cure. Go to a counselor, psychiatrist, they didn't mention astrologer. You know, so that is how it is. <laughs> so it's all here, it's all in the mind. This is what doctor says. Ki stress, why you take stress? Bhabi ji, stress kyu le rahi hai? Itna stress kyu le rahi hai? Earlier it was only blood pressure and diabetes. Now you google any latest medical journal, you will find bottom line, it says stress. For any or every disease, it says it is stress. And what is stress? The state of your mind. So what you are thinking? Let go. Ignore. Look at a bigger picture. Ek lama hi kaafi tha zindagi jine ke liye. Ab tumhe kuch yaad nahi, to chalo hum bhi bhool jate. So please keep forgetting things which are not needed, which are not. Even doctors are saying delete. Delete. Delete any thought which is not needed. You know, if you not delete your memory from your phone or from your computer, it will crash. What about this memory? So please delete. So communication is important, thinking is important, planning is important, but keep letting it go. Mercury is also about finance. So if you are more friendly, if you are good in networking, if you are good in communicating, then you will get more finance. And if you are good in humor. I am saying that, I got a note already, make it less funny. So, but anyways, this is who I am. So, they have realized the mistake already actually, by inviting me. So, uh, so make it fun, you know, life is serious. My job is serious. But I try to entertain myself, you know, it was a long, long day already. So anyways, so Mercury, utilize it in the right, proper way. If you want to get more finances, Mercury, make it a happy Mercury. Then comes Jupiter. The guru of astrology. I said mother of astrology is moon. The guru of astrology is guru, Jupiter. And as, as I've told you already, if you go to astrologer, the first thing astrologer will look at your horoscope is where your Jupiter's place, how strong it is. And Jupiter is about wisdom, knowledge, spirituality. Your guru. And uh, if you have a great Jupiter, you will be wise. If you have a great Jupiter, you should be spiritual. What if it is not? Then be spiritual. Because, you know, astrology doesn't say this is fixed. Now you cannot change. You can change by understanding what are your weak sides. So if you know your Jupiter is not that great and is one of the most important planet in your horoscope, please become spiritual. But the problem is the moment you talk about spirituality, and if I ask everyone to raise their hand, I, I'm sure everyone will raise their hand. But most of them will be talking about rituals, not spiritual. So try to be more spiritual than only being ritualistic. You know, I was doing a show, uh, it was a Pakistani ch channel in Dubai. And that was the time I used to travel from du uh, Delhi to Dubai every Thursday and come back on Sunday. And it was a live show, Guiding Star with Sandeep Kochar. And, you know, a Muslim country, a Muslim channel, and, I, I, and they don't believe in astrology even. And I used to say, religion is man-made. Please grow above that. You know, religion was created, like we go to kindergarten to show a child, you know, this is color red, A for apple. And with this belief that someday everyone will grow up and will connect to the higher self and will become spiritual. But unfortunately, most of us are still ritualistic. So being spiritual is a beautiful being. And the day you understand the connect, that's the reason I say only thing which really works is meditation. So if you can do some kind of meditation, I don't have, you know, any app. I don't have any, any, any kind of thing where I can, you know, guide you. Uh, Shraddha has, uh, has amazing way to, you know, connect with energy. So you can connect with her. I'm uh, losing another 20 clients. So, uh, <laughs> so connecting with higher self will make you spiritually. Obviously, you can follow your own mantras. Mantras have power. I'm not denying that. You can connect with your God of whatever kind. You can keep continuing with your places of worship. Very good. Because I believe they are all sources of energies. But connect with that instead of being only, really, uh, you know, I've seen people coming to me telling me, you know, I re recite Hanuman Chalisa every day seven times. And I, you know, I say Hanuman Ji doesn't have time to count how many times you have done already. You know, and if you are doing it, you are getting late and you are doing da-da-da-da-da, it has no meaning. Do it once, but do it with faith.
connect so this is being spiritual so mantras your religion religion everything is important but connect i am saying take to the, take it to the next level feeling the presence of god wherever you are you know nusrat ali fateh ali khan uh, you know he sang this song i will not sing it i know otherwise you will all leave ki saanso ki mala mein likh do pi ka naam तो पंडित जी विल टेल यू इतने इतने मंत्र का जाप करिए यू नो आप आपका ये मंत्र ऐसा हो जाएगा आपका ये हो जाएगा तो व्हाई टू काउंट दोज मंत्रास यू डोंट नीड टू काउंट इट सांसों की माला ब्रीथ फील द प्रेजेंस ऑफ गॉड वेर एवर यू आर दिस इज स्पिरिचुअलिटी सो बीइंग स्पिरिचुअल सो व्हेन यू डू दैट योर जुपिटर विल बिकम सो ब्यूटिफुल दैट यू विल बी ब्लेस विद एवरीथिंग विच इज ब्यूटिफुल बिकॉज प्रेस प्रोस्पैरिटी वी टॉक अबाउट मटेरियलिस्टिक थिंग्स बट आई थिंक द राइट वर्ड इज prosperity and prosperity can only come to you when you have that spiritual connect when you have a good jupiter and that will make you wiser as well another planet the most famous one is venus and which i already spoke venus is all about love luxury comfort music dance drama acting painting fashion passion everything which is beautiful is venus and venus is your luxury your glamour venus is women mothers daughters uh, wives obviously uh, yeah. good so all three are important so if you are smiling trust me venus is smiling so bring that harmony i know as i told you destiny is already fixed so you were meant to be married to whoever but at least you can smile <laughs> you want me to say it again wow so you ran with someone else or is a sip acha okay no i'm so sorry okay all right okay okay great yeah that is what i said absolutely that is what we say love is blind yeah they are becoming more intelligent absolutely absolutely yeah so venus so bring that smile make your venus happy i don't need to add more to it because i have already spoken about venus now coming to the most dangerous sounding planet which is saturn and the moment you talk about saturn your shani you know you will have fears and trust me saturn is one of the most beautiful planet anyone who has a good saturn in their horoscope will always be prosperous anyone who has industry their husband is industrious they will have great saturn saturn can give you an abundance which you have you can't even imagine so saturn is not a bad planet please get this fear out of your mind people talk about sale sathi this and that i have seen people becoming millionaire billionaire from millionaire and from zero to millionaire during sale sathi and i was quote one example narendra modi ji has scorpio moon sign he became twice cf chief minister of gujarat during sale sathi and twice prime minister of india during sale sathi and rahul gandhi has the same moon sign <laughs> so that means both of them were running sale sathi one did something which is once in centuries and one who who had all the boxes ticked born in tenjanpath and is still you know not able to achieve maybe some day his time will come he may that is another thing you know i remember i met him once uh, in the flight and then um, i wrote a poetry about him it was long long time back ki uh, charkha chalna band ho gaya ye mujhe band kara denge shubhra ji abhi charkha chalna band ho gaya main khadi kahan se launga charkha chalna band ho gaya main khadi kahan se launga rahul bhaiya shaadi kar lo main gandhi kahan se launga because ye desh to gandhi se hi chalta tha that is what we have learned but uh, now things are changing great so saturn is such a beautiful planet which i was talking about it talks about your hard work because saturn will not give you things easily you have to work hard and that is where astrology comes it talks about whatever it is whatever your journey is whatever your interpretation of your dashas are whatever destiny or you know your astrologer pandit ji will tell you the bottom line is in astrology it says karm pradhan hai your deeds will define your destiny without putting hard work without putting pl proper planning without implementing with the right integrity intention your love towards what you are doing you won't get success so destiny goes hand in hand 
with your hard work. Astrology is also, astrologically also it is proven because ninth house is house of luck and third house is house of initiative. The more initiative you take, the more luck will support you. So you can't get success without putting effort. So Saturn talks about your efforts in life. Saturn talks about bad, Saturn talks about poverty, grief, sadness, hardships. So if you really want to overcome that, I would suggest you one remedy, keep helping needy and poor. The more compassionate you will be, the more charitable you will be. And I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, I'm uh, in this platform where you are already doing a lot of stuff for, for underprivileged. This is something which is so great. And that is how it will, everything will come back to you. Because I believe in whatever goes around comes around. I believe in law of attraction. Rhonda Byrne wrote, wrote this book called Secrets uh, in 2008. But uh, I'm uh, before her, uh, before that book, uh, born before that book. So I believe in that since my beginning. You become what you think. This is my favorite statement. I follow it to, to the core. Your, your thoughts will make who you are. What you perceive is what you conceive. I 100% believe in it. So what you create is what will come back to you. So it's not about accumulation. It's all, all about sharing. And when you share, it will come back to you in many other ways. It is not about spending these many hundred thousand whatever. You know, the goodness will come in many other ways. With good relation with your children, good relation with your spouses, good health, good harmony, happiness. Happiness, which you can't get from any supermarket. It is how blessings, so these kind of blessings will come through your charity. That is what Saturn talks about. Keep helping needy and poor and it will come back to you. Saturn also get exalted in the sign of Venus in Libra. Why? Because it goes hand in hand. So the more beautiful your Saturn becomes, the more luxury, comfort and happiness will come to you. Ketu is a planet, second last. I know it is a yeah, little bit technical, but I hope you are uh, liking it. No? Okay. So Ketu is a planet which has nothing to do with materialism. The moment I will see your horoscope tomorrow and will tell you your Ketu Dasha is on, that means you are totally frustrated and you have no clue what to do. So it is a seven years or long period, so you can change your mind, you still have time. So seven years long Ketu means no materialism. But we are all materialistic. As I've said, because of few desires and because of our responsibility to make our life better for our children, whatever. So what to do? So whenever you, you connect with Ketu during the Dashas, even you have a Ketu, everyone has a Ketu in their horoscope. It depends where it is placed. Like 12th house Ketu means this could be the last birth, you will have salvation. And they say, how you get moksha? What is, what is the process of getting moksha? The only, only answer is when you are done with all your desire. When you feel accomplished, when you feel fulfilled, nothing left to get more. That is how you get moksha. So Ketu talks about anyone who has a Ketu in 12th house, they will have this kind of thought. That's the reason, you know, I'm always motivating you to go to Shraddha because I have a 12th house Ketu. But anyways, <laughs> Ketu can also, Ketu can also make you intuitive. Anyone who has a good Ketu on, on ascendant will have some kind of mark on their forehead. They will, you know, maybe in childhood you, you got some injury or whatever. If not, then you may get one. Uh, God forbid. <laughs> but, but Ketu will, will leave a sign. When I said, you know, I, uh, about face reading, the moment I see a mark there, you can check each other. If you don't know if, if there is a mark on your forehead. You know, trust your instincts. It will never go wrong. Astrologer may go wrong sometime if it is on a high. But the Ketu, person with a good Ketu, will never go wrong. So Ketu is not a bad planet actually. The only remedy to Ketu is again when you become spiritual and meditative because Ketu is almost like Jupiter. It's all about detachment. And anyways, when somebody claims that he's a spiritual person and uh, what is the right definition to be spiritual? The right answer is when you are attached in a detached manner. You want everything at the same time. You, want, you can't leave anything at this moment. So if you can make a balance, which is not that easy, but there are people who can do that. So if you, if you have that attachment and detachment balance in your life, you are done. So you can also start liking your Ketu. I've seen Ketu in 11th house can even give you windfalls. So Ketu is not always bad, depending on how you are treating with it. So your meditation will help your Ketu Dasha, whatever it is. Now, last but not the least, the most important planet. Why I'm saying the most important one? It is Rahu. And this Kaliuga is ruled by Rahu. The planet of deception, allegation, diplomacy, tact, and even manipulation. And you know who has got the power in this in this world maximum power 
who are the one who are into politics and who can go into politics a person who has a good strong rahu so rahu has got all the power in kali yuga and rahu is totally unpredictable you can't predict anything how many how much wealth i have you have no idea how much power do i have you have no idea you can't you know sum up like that people who are into politics i'm saying people who have the power you don't know even you don't know i can you know just call someone and get something done maybe i don't look like that powerful uh, i'm not going to jump anymore but uh, you know but one phone call so this is rahu so rahu can give you that kind of space because rahu rules space actually so but rahu is also about maya rahu is also about illusion and we are in this illusionary world i am from mumbai it is known as maya nagari you know you become a star and after two fridays you're back to square one it is all about illusion and we are most of us are living a illusionary life most of us because we don't realize what life is all about and that is how shraddha started with harmony happiness energies you know connecting with yourself decluttering yourself so i believe in knowing yourself so my dear friends i'm here to just give you one thought no matter what who you are what you are doing what situation you are in please learn to be happy and i always say if you are happy today you will be happy tomorrow if you are waiting for something to happen then you will never be happy i promise you that so learn to be happy problem is we are programmed and we are behaving exactly what we are supposed to do if i am miserable don't tell me how to be happy because this is what i have chosen so change that mind and you will change so i wrote it once this is the last uh, last one i, I promise you zindagi mein muskurane ki aadat zarur dalo zindagi mein muskurane ki aadat zarur dalo aur na mile koi wajah to aina hi dekh dalo and trust me i get up i will not say early in the morning i am not early riser so i got this flight uh, with great difficulty anyways so look at the mirror smile and when you smile your mind will think your mind will think your mind will think thank you your mind will think something good is happening with you when you when you smile and when mind will be happy it will release that kind of enzyme enzymes and chemicals and whatever energies even and that is how you 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 are surrounded by those kind of energies which we call it aura so sometime you feel connected to a person sitting next to you sometime you don't even say hello i have seen many a times most of my you know big incident in my life happened because of someone sitting besides me today shraddha was sitting beside me i don't know what will happen today but what i'm saying is so sometime you don't feel like saying hello to a person sitting next to you and sometime you get married after you land so so it is all about energies so bring that happy energies within you so don't be program break that shackles come out of it be a happy version of yourself wear a smile make this your identity and get get rid of your whatever programming which i said adat kyunki zindagi se kaha tha i wrote it once for my wife but she felt so bad then i started saying ki i wrote it for life to bhai zindagi se kaha tha ki adat ho gayi hai berukhi ki teri life se kaha कि आदत हो गई है बेरुखी की तेरी अब मोहब्बत ना कर बिगड़ जाएगी आदत मेरी सो वी आर प्रोग्राम विद दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो प्लीज चेन दैट एंड आई प्रॉमिस यू इट विल बी अ ब्यूटीफुल लाइफ एंड इट इज अ ब्यूटीफुल लाइफ सो लेट्स बी चूज टू बी हैप्पी यू डोंट नीड एनीथिंग सॉरी इट इज वर्थ फाइव लैख रुपीज मैम माई एवरी पोइट्री इज पेटेंट टेन चेक you know shubhra ji uh, will not let me come again i that i am 100% sure aadat ho gayi hai berukhi ki teri abhi se karo aadat ho gayi hai berukhi ki teri ab mohabbat na kar bigad jayegi aadat meri so isse pehle meri mera aaj ka din bigad jaye isse pehle mujhe yahan se nikal diya jaye 
uh, I would uh, like to congratulate each of you to be here. And as I've said, this is not a coincidence, all meant to be. We, including Shraddha, you know, we talk about those energies. Sometimes we miss understanding these small little things. We, 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 I didn't talk about anything, you know, something Mahan. It was all something, little, little things from life, from astrology, whatever I learned. Because, you know, Zindagi ne kuch sikha diya, wahi mein bata diya. So whatever I have learned, I have just expressed my bottom of my heart because there's nothing written on it. Because she already said, which I told you, whatever I, I had in mind. But I thank you from my bottom of my heart to be here, be here and you are definitely a patient listener. And thank you for having me and God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Kocher, for making the whole atmosphere light and taking us through this topic life slightly in a more humorous way. I would now like to request our chairperson, Ms. Shubra Maheshwari, Ms. Radha Sala, to join us on the dais, please. Before we open the floor for the question and answers, I would request our chairperson, Ms. Shubra Maheshwari, to take us through a few questions with the guests. Good afternoon, everybody. So I've seen a lot of laughter and a lot of excitement in the audience. Without taking much time, as we are at the end of the program, I would request a few questions from the audience, and before that, a few questions from me to my speakers. So Shraddha, uh, how would you define the difference between fear and faith? We normally fear the occult, and then there is a faith that things will get better. So how do you draw the thin difference of line there? Beautiful, one of. Should I take this? Yeah. Fear and faith, very strong two words, and one of the, two of the most important words in the dictionary. Fear goes on the top of the negative line, faith comes on the top of the positive line. Small story. There was this entire village which did not have water since a really long time. The entire village decided to come and pray the entire night. We'll pray for water and something will happen. Great. Everyone sat there, they prayed and they said tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning all of us will reach here together. The whole village came thinking they're going to get water. But only one boy came with an umbrella. That's faith. So when you put your energies out there, don't think that if I'm going to jump, will I get saved or not? Believe that there's an invisible parachute which is going to protect you no matter what. And as he said, the difference between God-fearing and God-loving, you know, the minute we get into rituals and I'll fast, I'll do this, I'll do that, if, I'll, if you do this, I'll do this, we are making a trade with God. We are telling him, if I do this, then you do this. You know, so it's kind of a transaction. That's called as God-fearing. That's called as fearing it. But when you have faith, you just be God-loving, have it in your heart and go all out there. Same with the occult sciences. Have the belief, do it to your capacity, what, where your intuition takes you, and that's more than enough. Guys, there is no right and wrong. There is no right and wrong way to manifest. There's no right and wrong energy. There's no right and wrong in anything. The only difference between the right and wrong is I can have faith in this or I will fear this. Don't do this one. Have faith and trust me, you'll be protected. Very well said. I, I would like to add just one line. If you have faith in astrology, don't need to fear. Another thing, you had mentioned about the uh, full moon rituals and all. So could you tell us, as we as lay laymen and uh, non-practitioners, what are some simple full moon, new moon uh, practices that we can do? Basic ones, as non-practitioners. Sure, so uh, Sandeepji did say that the moon is a very important planet and I also believe in that. I, my theory towards the full moon is, because it's Purnima, that energy is full, we have kind of, uh, it's exhilarated after 15 days and we've got that entire energy. I always do a release on full moons, you know. So sit down there, write down the things that you don't want out of your life, you know, light a candle and burn them, let go. For me, full moons are about let go and new moons are about new beginnings. 
So what I do on a new moon is I sit and manifest where I want to start, what I want to do in the next 15 days, how I can take things further. There's an old wife's tale which goes like, I mean, a lot of people feel that a new moon is not a good day. But somewhere I feel that in the olden days, people used to go from one place to the other. There was no moonlight to follow. So they thought a new moon is not a good day. And that's why they said Amavas is not good. But I have always felt the energy on a new moon day or a no moon day to start rising into something positive. So a very simple thing that I do, new moon, get your intentions put out there into the universe, save that paper. Again, look at it during the full moon after 15 days. What you don't want out of that, what you don't like out of that, write it down in a paper and burn it off. It's a great day to energize your stones, your crystals, put them in rock salt water, keep them overnight, energize them. The, full, the moon is full and it's got maximum power and energy. You've been speaking, Shraddha, about uh, Himalayan pink salt and a lot of this is we read about Epsom salt. So some take on that. Similar yet different, but uh, both work as energy cleansers. So there's really not an issue. You can use either or or. Um, but uh, yes, use the salt. And um, keep it separately in a space where uh, nobody else touches it. So it's your sacred place and your sacred salt because you don't want anyone else's energies coming. But really not much of a difference. Both are used in rituals. Both are used. And salt uh, should also be used in offices? Avoid. Uh, normal salt? Yeah, offices? Of course, everywhere, everywhere. I would say just like a fistful into the, as I told you, in the mopping water on a daily basis. You can use it to remove nazar. You can use it to, to cleanse the house. You get salt lamps nowadays. You get salt soaps. There's so much uh, energy of pink salt out there, you know. Very, very strong cleanser. All right, thank you. Sandeep ji. So you've been, t you told us about all the planets, uh, you know, how they are based and all. Now, a very, a question which haunts each one of us. Uh, I may have my moon week or my, okay, I don't know the English name. So my Guru Uchka and the Shani is whatever, it's week. How do we increase, enhance a planet which is not very strong in my chart so that it balances my life? Absolutely. Like I said, uh, you, you can't manipulate, you know, now you are born with those set of planet and it is all fixed because it cannot be changed. It is a part of your programming the day you are born. That is what we call horoscope. Now, not everyone is fortunate enough to get all the strong planet in your horoscope. So there would be some planet which would be weak and as Shubhraji has said, the how to enhance it. So there are significance of every planet. Like for moon, she said, you know, do this, do that. Another point uh, which you can add is make your mother happy. Moon is your mother. So the more, you know, you can obviously, mother is the most beautiful uh, part of anyone's life. The more your mother is happy, the more moon will become good. Mars is ab about brothers. The more your good connections are with your brothers, the more your Mars will be good. Sun is about father. So having that connect, we, we always say, we claim, we think, you know, no, I know I'm good with uh, my father, but, but do we express our emotion? Do we, we show our care? We are all, you know, running here and there. So we need to have those kind of beautiful moments with, with uh, you know, we can, where we can express that emotion. They are becoming older. So that is how you can create that warmth and bonding and make your planet strong. And Mer Mercury is all about friends. The more friends you have, the more connectivity. Show your care. It is not about, you know, uh, meeting everyone in a party or in, in some kind of events like this, but show your care. If somebody is running a, 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 maybe a low phase in their life, you have to have that kind of connect and show your concern towards the person. It's not about helping only through monitoring. Sometimes you need to, you know, give that person that energy because sometimes people lose their hope. So astrologers do the same. They, they charge you up. They let you understand it is, you know, it is not that you are done with it. 
the, the, another, you know, there's, there could be a beginning maybe after six months or three months even. So you have to show that bonding is about enhancing your Mercury. So same goes with Jupiter, anyone, uh, you know, your Guru, your spirituality which I spoke about. Venus is, as I've said, so you, you are all uh, here, Venus present here. So create that harmony within you, you know, uh, he's trying his best. I know it's not easy, but you can bring that smile bring that harmony within you to your Venus, your own Venus will become strong and Saturn which I said keep helping needy and poor, the more you, you show your compassion, the more Saturn will become stronger. So these are the ways which you can bring that kind of energy in your own planet which are not that great planet but very important for you. So if you can enhance it with these kind of small little things, I just spoke about the significance. There are many other ways, there are rings, you know, I mean stones, you can wear a particular stone, obviously after showing your horoscope, it's not like Amitabh Bachanji is wearing a blue sapphire, you can wear a blue sapphire too, no. You have to check whether it is good for you or no. And then there are mantras, then there are few remedies which she was talking about. So th there are many, many ways where you can enhance your planets which are good for you and it really works, trust me it works. Alright, thank you so much. Uh, we would now like to. Open. I request the mem members who have their questions to first please state their name and to whom they are uh, asking the question. So, and. We Sorry, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to pose the question, let's start on the right side of the room. Events team, please help the people with the. I just keep it very brief, the questions, please. It's on that side? Yeah, okay. Yeah, please. Uh, good evening, uh, Sandeep ji and Shraddha ji. My name is Sarva Mangala. I wanted to know on how uh, past, you had spoken about past life karma, how it affects and how do we understand that it is affecting our present life? To, uh, to both of you. Achha, sure. So, uh, as I've started with, you know, astrology begins with prarabdha, the deeds done in the past birth. And that is the reason you are born in a particular family, in a particular city, someone born in a small hut, someone born in a as good as palace. So, you can't choose that. So, how it is related? It is related from the past birth. And that is how astrology always talk about karma. Karma in the past and karma in this birth. So, past you are already done, you can't change it. So you have to undergo the process, whatever grief, miseries and incidents come to you. Sometimes it is fortunate, you, you have done great deeds in the past and you are blessed to have an amazing family, amazing environment, everything is coming to you beautifully without even putting effort because you are blessed with those kind of karmas, good karmas, what you have done in the past birth and that is something which is beautiful and you can get it, you can get it checked from your horoscope. If anyone who has a good set of planet, good Jupiter and even there is a horoscope known as Navamsha, one ninth of your horoscope or ninth house, house of luck. Which, which talks about your past birth. So if you have great planets over there, then you are blessed to get everything on the platter and it will come to you naturally. There are people who really work hard and they don't get success. And there are people who put even, uh, you know, a small, little effort and they, they get everything uh, on their plate. How? It is about that, that, that kind of karma. But the question about what you have asked me, ki, how to know about what kind of karma, I think it is not needed. As I've said, you know, accept it whatever it is. If, if you are not happy with this or that, I think it is all about acceptance. So instead of going back, there is some Nadi astrology, you know, where they, they read your, um, uh, you know, leaves in Tamil and they talk about ki in the past birth, you know, you did this crime and you, you, you killed someone or you, uh, you know, uh, there was a theft in temple or something like that. They put fear or whatever it is and then because of that, it is not happening or that's not happening. I, I think that's not true. So they are manipulating a bit about creating that fear and getting some remedy done. So don't go into that, please. So what I'm saying is accept your life as it is instead of looking past uh, in the past, look further what you can do in this birth. So bring that harmony, happiness, that kind of passion in your life and compassion. As you said, love yourself. This is something which is more beautiful. So if you start loving yourself, you start loving everyone around. So create that energy and then your deeds in this life which will define your destiny. And it is all related to your mindset which I said will help you with your spiritual connect and meditation will make your journey. So you don't live, need to look back, look where you are going. Next. Hi. So, just to uh, answer your question, if you're driving a car today, and if you look in the review, rear view mirror, mirror, the vision is going to be small. The further you go in life, the smaller the vision gets. When you look in your windscreen, your vision is large. You're going into your future. 
I'm a firm believer of living in the present. Yes, your past work exists. Yes, those karmas exist. But there's really nothing we can do about it. Yes, there is destiny, there is karma. Can we touch that? No. The only thing that we can do is the bank balance that we have today, add more value to it. So if you get this bank balance higher, automatically that one is going to go lower. Live in the present and look ahead and that's all we need to do. The next slide. Yeah, just help them with the microphone. Yeah. Hello, my name is Deepthi Agarwal and my question is for Shubhra. Shubhra, I'd like to know more about bubbling. Uh, Shraddha, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Uh, Shraddha, I would, I would like to know more about bubbling. Absolutely. Uh, when you spoke about it, like I have a son, he's got his first 10th exam tomorrow. And how I can do bubbling in order to protect him? Or how does it work? I mean, okay, firstly, my question to you. Are you nervous about his exam? No. That's superb. Because a mother's energy towards her child is the strongest energy that there is. So if you're going to put out nervousness up there, somewhere it'll come on to him. So I loved your answer. Don't be nervous about him. Secondly, I don't think he needs bubbling for his exam. Let him be free because if he put him in a bubble, that'll block him. Okay. You know? So for an exam, bubbling is not needed. But yes, if you just want to protect your children in general, bubbling is one of the best things to do. You basically... Um, Again, as I'm going to repeat what I said, you visualize yourself, your family, your children in a bubble of their choice. You can be in it or you can just provide them with it. And you just signify that only positive things, situations and people will touch that bubble. Nothing negative touch them, that touches them. The third thing would be that you manifest the kind of result that you want. You see that his report card has already come. You see that he's already got these marks and we're celebrating by taking him to his favorite restaurant or seeing the report card and telling everybody. Your vision should be the what you want as your answer. Okay. That, will, that energy will get transformed into him and give you the results that you're looking for. Shraddha, another question. Uh, when you do cord cutting, yeah. how do you do it? Like you imagine the person who's hurt you and you imagine them sitting in front of you. So, so person, situation or circumstance, whatever it is, it's there in front of you, negative, positive. You can even sometimes want to cut cord with a lot of positivity because you don't want to overwhelm yourself, right? You just visualize it there and you take an imaginary knife and head to toe, you visualize that you have cut, cut it like an umbilical cord is cut. Similarly, you visualize these uh, imaginary cords, take it in the front, at the back, cut it and just feel free, quickly bubble and you're sorted. It's very simple. Okay. Also, you can read a lot about cord cutting. If you, just, if you just Google the word, you'll get the exact way out to do it. Do these techniques really work? 110%. Can, can 110%. we go on? Yeah. Does breathing help you stay alive? Thank you. Absolutely. Can we have the next question, please? They're right there. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Shraddha and uh, Sandeep ji. Uh, I just want to know if you want to learn astrology, what planet has to be strong in your horoscope mm -hmm. and what is the particular combination that you have, both of you, that you've come into this line? Thank you. It's a good question, though. Very good question. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> lot of yeah see so a lot of competition already in in our field but but anyways yeah the question is beautiful you know i must tell you i was a cricketer i played with few international players i played at national levels and with rahul including rahul Dravid, gautam Mabir. they're not they're not they're all my friends now and uh, that was my only dream in life so i had no clue that somebody uh, you know someday i'll become an astrologer because uh, there's no one in my entire uh, family or even ancestors you know you <laughs> no one i'm the first and the last one now, if I look uh, at my horoscope, uh, it belongs to astrologer. Because um, eighth house is a house of karmic, what you have brought from the past. Astrology is a divine science. You can learn anything on the planet. This is the only science which you can't learn. It will come to you. 
so eighth house has to be activated so like for me i have got three planets in eighth house and jupiter is respecting all that forming all those raj yogas because of only one combination i am re revealing my horoscope first time and that has made a beautiful eighth house that is the reason the occult sciences has come to me without even realizing that i will become a astrologer still now you know the way i talk the way i carry uh, myself uh, i will give rate 2 out of 10 you know to be a person like uh, like this as a astrologer you know it is not done i, I, I don't look like a professional astrologer that, that's my only bread and butter this is my only science which i know and this science has made me who i am today i thank this divine science but it can only come to you one because of your eighth house secondly shraddha just said because of your good jupiter and most important thing is if you really want to be a good astrologer your conscious has to be clear if you are if you really want to learn astrology to make it a business out of it there's nothing wrong in it but intention integrity honesty with divinity these ingredients are very important because anyone who is coming to you is coming you with full faith is coming you with uh, coming to you with some kind of situation in life and when you are exploiting that person that is not right so i always say uh, you know i wrote it once on facebook uh, you know no no it is not in hindi this time ki <laughs> astrologer astrology is always right astrology is always right but astrologers are left and right sorry uh, as i have said you know sometime you don't choose something it will come to you so what you seek is seeking you i completely believe in it my you know i am a philosopher since beginning inclusiveness about life you know why she is like that and uh, why she is wearing a prada whatever you know so if you if you <laughs> then you then you start thinking you know why i don't have it so this kind of thought about whatever you know then it will give you some some kind of questions in your mind and then you will start looking for answers so for me it is not about comparison still i never compare in my life i am a very content very happy person i thank god for that i have got zero desire in my life i have responsibilities of course i have to but i am never after anything so i just go with the flow i follow it i am a very very happy space any other astrologer in my place would have created that kind of gyan here but i created only one or two elements where you can bring the peace harmony happiness and smile in your life that is what i was trying to do i think that is what is needed <laughs> sorry like no no she doesn't have to add anything <laughs> <laughs> hello here good evening sandeep ji here she has finished next question he answered let's get the next question <laughs> please go ahead no sorry the question was my calling or about what planet should be be in a strong position uh to uh, work on astrology i have seen anything with learning whether it's doctors lawyers uh, uh you know scientists teachers uh, an astrologer because it's all about studies uh that jupiter is always good to enhance it you can wear a yellow sapphire because it will work and also you have to have a strong intuition as he said it needs to be your calling so the more you get into this field you need to clean up your intuition and it automatically automatically happens each one of us anyways has our intuition within us there's dust on it the more we study it the more we do it the dust gets cleaned away and then what is left is your pure intuition which is talking to you and that guides you a lot in this field and i got into it i stumbled upon it as a mistake i don't know whether it was in my charts or not but i'm going to check with him later but i stumbled upon it as a mistake after both my daughters were born i was kind of bored i wanted to do something i started with numerology got into tarot got into vastu never look back practice what i preached and that's when you oh. and i also believe in one thing like the question which you have raised it must be there in your horoscope there's a reason the thought has come to you so astrologically also it says planet sun or planet jupiter if it's placed in scorpio the person has brought loads of knowledge from the past birth so it is not what you are learning you are not learning actually anything you are already have it in you you are just now bringing it up please check my charts uh, sure i will i will try yeah we'll take the next question yeah sandeep ji here first row yes, yeah please. yeah good evening uh, 
So I'm Sona Chatwani, and this question is not for me. I'm meeting you tomorrow. So this is for a friend who's sitting next to me. Uh, you said you can talk, <laughs> you can see a person and uh, tell about her. I would want to know about her. <laughs> I have known here, her for so many years, but I did not know her and you said that in a moment you know people. We did not know them, so please tell them about them. You are right, you know, my wife also says that I did not know you until now. You know, it takes some time, a lifetime to understand a person. But at the same time, like, you know, distance is here. But looking at her forehead and eyebrows, I can say one thing about her, she will always be right in her suggestion. Because her mind is really very, very sharp. So people like her, you know, they are very good in banking, finance, marketing, media, communication. The way they think, the way they, they talk is, is beautiful. So she is definitely a learner who has all the uh, intelligence. That is the first thing. When I will read her horoscope, her Mercury should be the ruling planet, according to me. Because that is what her forehead and eyebrows are indicating. But looking at the palm and other things, obviously I correlate. For me, her astrology, palmistry and phase reading, it goes hand in hand. But I think she is really, uh, definitely, uh, because they say either you can be beautiful or wise, she is both. Next question. Next question. Yeah. The microphone, please. Yeah. Yeah. No. Right there. First. Yeah. We will. Good evening, Shraddha ji and Sandeep ji. Shraddha, my question is to you. It's uh, something related to manifestation. I just wanted to learn how to do three, six, nine Tesla's meditation. Okay. So that is a kind of a meditation. Yes. It is not about manifestation. Yes. Right? It's different. Uh, I think you should kind of go to somebody who teaches you that. Because once you get initiated by a proper teacher, you can always do it better. You know, so it's a kind of a meditation that you need to learn. It'll, it's, it'll be too much to explain it right now. But I would suggest that you go to a proper teacher who teaches you only that and then use that. But also see if you're ready to do it. Because yeah. any kind of meditation that you start is like a commitment. You know, you True. need to then do it and follow it to get the, to get the right results over Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you are also raised, you raise your hands on manifestation and all yes, that, which yes. is superb. If you're doing that, I mean, fabulous. You're so is it three time, is it uh, th uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, 6 p.m. in the afternoon or 9 p.m. in the, or is it you know, three times, six times or nine times? That's the doubt I want to clarify. Okay. So usually it is time related, three, yeah. six, nine, but I really feel time doesn't exist. Okay. So there is no right or wrong time to manifest or meditate. I didn't want to say this, but, but now that you asked it again, I'll say it. I don't believe in it because I don't believe in restrictions, you know. You can be anywhere and you can have a moment of uh, rejoice and you would want to manifest or meditate. So those become restrictions, that becomes time bound. Then we are, putting, we are putting our own selves into chains which we should not do. So my suggestion to you would be don't do it, manifest anytime, anywhere you want. Thank you so much. Okay, last question. This will be the last question for the day. Uh, Sandeep ji, uh, this is Gayatri here, this side, last. Already, already. Yeah. Uh, this question is for you. Uh, can you put light on this uh, Pitru Dosh, uh, Kala Sarp Dosh, Manglik, Vagera, Yejo Hota Hai? Or can you put on light on these things? Look, in my poetry, I didn't use words in any of my words. Because, <laughs> <laughs> see, th this is where the fear factor in astrology comes. There are things which cannot be changed and there are things uh, which has no meaning even. So, what I'm saying is like, uh, I'll talk about uh, Kal Sabdosh. You know, even it sounds scary. Yeah. Trust me, there is no scripture in astrology where Kal Sabdosh is mentioned. It has been created maybe 70, 80, 90 year, years back. Just so, you know, they found another way to get some puja done and this and that. That is the reason. I'll tell you what happened really, what went wrong with astrology. Astrology primarily is in Sanskrit. Now, how many people can understand Sankrit? And even in olden era, era, you know, it was only, uh, you know, Brahmins were, were, were supposed to uh, be learned and, you know, they were into education, rest were doing their different job, Chhatriya will do this and Vaish will do that. So, they, they were the one who learned Sanskrit and then they understood astrology. Then what happened is, with Brahmins, there is another thing is, they, they have a religious side because they also know all the rituals. So, I am a doctor medical doctor, 
I also own a factory of medicine, so I'll make sure I'll prescribe every medicine which has been manufactured in my factory. So these Brahmins, they have mixed two different sides of it. You know, puja, every puja with every kind of dosha in your horoscope. So when they found that dosha, uh, they need to create more dosha, they created more with time. So please don't go into that. Pitr dosha, I will definitely talk about like uh, sun in Saturn is known as a Pitr dosha. Yeah, even sometime Rahu's with sun is a Pitr dosha. They say anyone who has a Pitr dosha will not have, uh, you know, progeny like boy. You know, they say earlier, uh, still be, few people believe in ki progeny, we should have a, you know, male child to, you know, uh, for, for our own progeny. But uh, trust me, if you have a male child, then you don't have that Pitra Dosha. So what I'm saying is, don't keep this thing in your mind. There are many other things, you know, death and birth, no one can control. So people, you know, th they are going for uh, uh, <coughs> uh, sometime, uh, uh, what you called, uh, uh, they are not getting pregnant for 10 years and they are, they, they are couples, you know, who, who are going for these kind of things uh, every year. The process is the same, but why it is not happening? So the thing is, it is controlled by some higher power. So please don't put these kind of fears in your mind. I spoke for almost one hour. I didn't use a single word about those areas because I, trust me, it's been 22 years. I never believe in that. You, life is bigger than that. In hathon se upar kusto hai, in lakiron se upar kusto hai, in sitaron se upar kusto hai. So have that connect. So anyone who has that divinity in them and go to a astrologer and find out your journey. If you understand time is bad, no matter what dosha you have, it will be there. If time is good, if, even if there is a dosha, you will sail through and you will be happy. So know your time, which is the most important thing in life. Shahar ki har gali mein dhunda aur dhunda tujhe fizaon mein. Shahar ki har gali mein dhunda aur dhunda tujhe fizaon mein. Kiya to sajda tere liye, teri khushbu mili havao mein. Kya wada, thank you sir. Okay, the last question here, right here. Yeah. Good evening Sandeep and good evening Shraddha. Uh, I'm really impressed with both of you all. The only thing I wanted to ask, you have not covered uh, something for so many of us, like um, horoscope matching. So I don't need to worry about it, because I'm going to marry the other side. But now it's like this, like my children are married. I'm just asking for the ones who are, who are children are not married and who are really tensed and all. I just want to know, Horoscope matching pe aapne baat nahi ki, which is very important, I feel. Suppose you get, you meet a boy, it's an arranged marriage, then you meet the girl and then we match the horoscope and there's no, nothing like uh, matching numbers, 36 should be there. Or ek baat, mera aur Chandar Patni sahab ka horoscope, pandra, pandra ich ho <laughs> numbers hai bas. But because his, his was Raj Yog and you know, it was love or whatever. Ma'am, can we keep it a little brief? For 45 years, I'm married now. I just wanted to ask you about the comparison, about how do you do about this wedding yes. thing. See, uh, we really uh, did it deliberately because uh, we wanted to come again, you know, for other <laughs> stuff. So, so it wasn't. But yeah, it is a very uh, important question. I, will, I must tell you one thing. It is not about those only matching those numbers. That you can do it internet. That is what people go wrong. Pandit ji ne kaha ki aapke 18-20 point match ho gaya hai, mitai ke laiye, shadi kar dijiye. Because Pandit ji ki to ho chuki hai. You know, to abhi aap jane. To the right thing is to get that horoscope analyzed. Ki uska married life kaisa hai, uska character kaisa hai, what about his future, his mindset, uska, you know, how wise he is, how caring he is, how kind he is, how loving he is. Woh koi dekhta nahi hai, aur phir Pandit ji ko baad mein blame karte hai ki aapne to kaha tha match ho raha hai, woh to ab divorce ki tari kar raha hai. So get that horoscope analyzed. That is the right way to get that to horoscope check. Now, that is different. Like, if you are running, now someone will run away. So you can't control that because that is again a part of destiny. And that is always said. But it's done. That there is always a 50% chance whether the horoscope match will be or not. So, if you are running, that is also a part of destiny. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, you have addressed all our questions very patiently. <clears throat> now, uh, this is a special announcement for all the members who want a personal appointment. Please give your name outside to Mr. Wamsi. He's outside and we'll fix the time for you. Uh, they are here for us tomorrow and day after. So please, uh, outside you can get your names written. Now, on this note, can I ask Ms. Sarita Rao and Ms. Sangeeta Varma to c bring the autograph sheets? And now I request Senior Vice Chair, Ms. Ritu Shah, to deliver the vote of thanks.
Thank you, everybody. You've been a wonderful audience today. Good evening to one and all. Attract what you expect. Reflect what you desire. Become what you respect. Mirror what you admire. Astrology, numerology is the bridge between who you are now and what you have the potential to be. On this note, I, Ritusha, on behalf of Wikiflow Hyderabad, take this opportunity to thank our esteemed guest speakers, Shraddha Sala and Mr. Sandeep Kochar. Shraddha, you are a bundle of positive energy with super radiance and super practical and simple approach to the subject. And my take back would be associate yourself with the solutions and not with the problem. And yes, the attitude of gratitude takes us far and beyond and yes, love yourself thoroughly. Sandeep ji, whatever has to happen will happen. But with the guidance of astrology and your expertise, one can plan their life and take right decisions at the right time. And I liked what you said. Khud aur khuda par yakin rakhe. It's a great take back from you, Sandeep ji. A change is a change when you change. Thank you for gracing Hyderabad chapter with your experienced presence and life indeed is very, very beautiful. A generous thank you to our sponsors, Diamond Sponsor, Freedom Rice Brand Oil, Hospitality Partner, The Park, Creative Partner, RBC. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you, Press and Media, for placing Flo Branner at the right place. A heartfelt gratitude to all our past chairpersons who are the pillars of our organization and a big thank you to all our members without whom nothing is possible. Your presence keeps us motivated and to bring, to bring the best for you. A big shout out to the committees 2022-23 who work selflessly towards the goal of empowerment. If you have faith, you never worry. You believe that it will work out and you will walk in gratitude knowing that it is already happening. Because once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. Thank you and Jai Hind.